Yo, 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 yo. Okay, maybe I shouldn't start it like that. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing tonight? Hopefully well. Uh, before we get cracking over here, let me go ahead and get the music playing. Make sure the camera's good. Camera's good. All right. Let me make sure the other views work. Classic. Okay. That's two times in a row, by the way, that OBS, two streams out of 42 streams, OBS decided to uh, work when I hit live. So that's good. Uh, how's everybody doing? Everything good? Uh, yesterday was a little Valentine, so I decided to not stream because, you know, wife and daughter. So uh, I kind of hung around and uh, decided to do it today. That's why I announced it early, and I saw there was some confusion in the chat early on <laughs> about the time. So my apologies, but uh, we're here today. We're here today. Uh, let me try to catch up with the chat. I got to go to my little window here to get the early early peeps in here. So it actually deleted the people that were chatting yesterday, so I can't call you out, unfortunately. But I saw Demon was here. Um, let's see. Creanova. What's going on? What's going on? Bill Farmer became a YouTube member. Uh, thank you, sir. Welcome to the SOS crew. Appreciate the support. You get to see videos early, chat with me, uh, get some Discord privileges, that type of thing. Uh, Jeff's bowling tonight, but he's going to be here in spirit. Jeff, you're always here in spirit, even if when we don't do a live stream, sir. Um, so uh, have a good. How do you say? How do you how do you tell someone to have a good uh, time bowling? Is there like a thing for that? Get as many strikes as possible. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know the term. Uh, Matthew, what's going on? Uh, do you still have that adjustable desk thing? Yes. Uh, oh, adjustable desk stand. I'm printing one right now. Uh, there is there is a lot of choices, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I use it to uh, hold my laptop. So my laptop is actually on that stand, uh, and it's fantastic. Uh, multifunctional arm mounting system. Yes, that one. I think I linked it in the video when I did the desk. So if you want those links, I think they're there. Uh, Eric, what's going on? Spencer Knight, how you doing? Uh, let's see, Martin Ramirez. Uh, Beladzo. Look at that. Cool name. Burr, 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 bzz. Intro goes hard. The intro it does go hard. I can't help but to, but to bump it. Uh, also, these tunes are going real hard i gotta turn it down a bit it's too hard 
Um, Lee, what's going on? The nods here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Print house, Jerry, what's going on? <laughs> Look where the cat drug it. That's right. Well, you have experience with this machine, so you are more than welcome to be here as I, as I butcher things. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So that's everybody. I think I caught up. Uh, oh, Frank, what's up? What's up, Frank? And Matthew. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this camera isn't really set up for anything quite yet. Uh, the box is also very large. So the point of today's stream is to get this thing unboxed and printing. This is the Artillery X4 Plus. If you guys noticed in the links, it is not currently available for sale. I believe it comes out after the 20th or the 20th is the pre-sale for this machine. Uh, there is a ton of other machines that they have, but there are the older versions of this. So this is the latest and greatest, and this is the plus size. They're going to have, I, I believe, three sizes. So very similar to what Mingda is doing with their machines, very similar to what uh, Elegoo is doing with their machines. And I just recently put out that video comparing the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus with the Mingda Magician Pro 2. So this would fit right into there. Uh, I didn't have enough time to get this out and test it alongside those machines just because I had them for so long. I didn't want to delay that video anymore. But the fact that I did that, I'll be able to reference those two machines while testing this. So my goal is to just get this unboxed, get it out, get it working, and then get it down here in the studio so that I can print with it and test it and give you guys a fair evaluation now that I have some direct comparisons with this machine. So that's kind of the goal. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think, is my chat not working? Uh, yeah, my chat's not updating. Let's see if I can refresh. Um, you guys can see me, right? Oh, okay. Oh, looks like Chad's back. Wonder what happened there. Hold on, I missed the whole bunch. Uh, I missed the whole bunch of uh, chats. Everything seemed to get stuck on the YouTube side this time. Not so much in OBS, so that's fun. Uh, w shirt, yes. You can pick these up at uh, shop at 3dprintsos.com along with these uh, super cool mugs. Lots of fun stuff there. I'll mention it in one second before we dig in. Let me just get uh, get make sure the, the chat's working. Yeah, now I get the welcome to the chat message on YouTube. So something, something was up there. Uh, let's see. 3D printing, I mean, nice. Uh, artillery uh, night, yes, that's right. You sound so much better. Yes, yes, I'm finally, I would say, to 100%, which is very nice. Lauren, what's going on? Going to eat dinner, coming back soon. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, Jerry, thank you. Uh, your store link doesn't work. Oh, great. Uh, why doesn't the store link work? Let's check that out. Oh, gosh, I picked, I clicked so many wrong buttons. Uh, <laughs> I ended up on the FL Sun store. <laughs> Let's go to live. On. So it should be shop. Uh, if it's store, then I know what the problem is. It is. Yep. It's. Uh, it should be shop. Shop at 3dprintsos.com. Um, why does that keep happening? I thought I changed it everywhere. My bad, guys. Um, it should be shop at 3dprintsos.com for the store. Uh, I need to... I need to for you know what? Let's let me make a physical list. Uh, oh, where did I put all of my? I guess I got rid of all of my actual notes uh, because I got a digital notebook that I use. But what's funny is the digital notebooks in my bag right now, and during live streams I don't take my bag out. I'm gonna write myself a note because this is what the fifth stream or something. Change. Door two forward two shop. That way, if you type in store or shop, it takes you to the same place. That's the goal. Wrote myself a little note. I'll put it over here so that I stop ignoring this thing and actually do it. 
All right, so it looks like I, there was definitely some um, disconnection uh, going on uh, with YouTube because it looks like I lost connection even to my, um, my Stream Deck uh, app here that I use. So that's a bit of a bummer. Hopefully that's all back to normal. Uh, chat does seem to be loading now. All right, let's see. Uh, better please do the tape line around your other half on the floor <laughs> to make it short. That's actually a good idea. Uh, and Wilmar, thank you again for mentioning that about the store. Uh, it should be shop.3dprintsos.com. Uh, oh, there you go. Matthew's telling me again. Yeah, this seems like this is a reoccurring thing. So the way it works is when I make a, when I make a new stream in OBS, there is a preset uh, amount of information that gets saved from the last stream. And even though I change it, it, it pulls the previous one, the one that's like saved. So I need to just not worry about that anymore and make sure both store and shop just take you to the same place. It's it's not hard to do. I just got to go into the to the DNS and forward some things. Um, you didn't say hi to me, so I quit. <laughs> Zoomy. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's see. Rodolfo, what's up? What's up? Uh, price. Um, that's actually a good question. Uh, let's see. Is it listed yet? Because it might not actually be listed yet. Uh, here, if we go to the browser view, this is their mini site for it. And I actually don't think it is. So it goes it goes for sale, well, for pre-order. It goes for pre-order uh, tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, sorry, the, the 20th. Uh, I just wanted to have some experience with it before that time. Uh, I believe if we go to... Here, let me let me copy this. Oh, you can't copy that. Wow, this is not okay. Uh, let's go to AliExpress because I I don't know if it's available here, but we're gonna find out. Um, Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus. So sometimes things are for sale here they're not their correct price oh here we go yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't consider this the actual price yeah yeah shipping's 240 dollars. so this is just they they do this stuff for their own markets uh for people to purchase so i wouldn't say i wouldn't purchase it from here uh before the release like this is this is uh, yeah it's not even their particular store like this is probably like some manufacturer thing that's indirect so i would take this with a huge grain of salt um but maybe this is telling of what the price is going to be which is a little high uh in comparison to the other two machines right um so whatever the price might be in the actual video where i actually have experience with this thing and take my time with it i'll be sure to list but i would uh yeah at the moment this is just a preview of a machine that's going to be out on the 20th I, I don't I don't think that's the right price guys so just just consider that okay uh, all right let me let me continue trying to catch up with chat real quick uh, don't trouble you drunk so I'm here to three print vicariously a single fan pin pin broke on my k1 max tool oh man that's unfortunate like on the actual tool head ah yeah, and and the taco guy, they're out right now until the 19th and 20th. So you can't necessarily get like quick help from them either. So that, that's unfortunate. Hey, Jesper, how you doing? I can't find the space for more printers. Neither can I. Yeah, see, I, I would uh, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't use that as a way to gauge the actual price. <laughs> Sue me. All right, I'm just gonna get. Oh, okay. Two things. Two things. Hold on. Hold on. Almost, almost jumped the gun. First things first is at the top here. There, there is a pinned comment. If you guys are planning on sticking around till the end, uh, I do a uh, filament giveaway by our uh, live stream sponsor, 3D Max. Uh, so that link will take you to this. This is the Gleam.io website where you fill in just the basic information, give me just a tiny bit of information so that I could use it for some reason. I actually don't use it for anything. Sometimes I read these out loud uh, if it's like a long, interesting question. Uh, but all you have to do is answer the question, be in the United States, 
uh, and be present and you can have a chance to win a spool of, of PLA Plus from 3D Max. Uh, and there's a timer here, it actually live counts, just there's still two hours left until you know about the end of the stream. Uh, the other thing is, like I mentioned about the shirt earlier, shop.3dprintsos.com will take you to this lovely site where I have been adding uh, a bunch of uh, shirts uh, that I've designed, uh, some hoodies here, and a bunch of different cool merch, uh, like these work mats in various colors and these awesome mugs um, that you can share with your friends and family. I tried to make the pricing literally to the point where I make zero profit off of this. Uh, it is just for you guys to be able to get something in return uh, for purchasing. Uh, which I think is cool instead of just something digital. You know, this gives you like a physical thing and I think that's pretty fun. So, you know, it's 16 bucks uh, for shirts, which my previous store was 28, uh, which was just crazy. I never thought about it, uh, but $30 for a shirt with someone else's logo on it is just not fun. So I'm trying to switch that and just make, you know, put as much effort as I can into this with the time that I have and, and make the shop as cool as I can. So. If you guys have suggestions, looking forward you know, to hearing them and uh, let me know what you guys think about this stuff. So far, all the stuff that I've ordered from here, I've really enjoyed. Like this shirt is really light feeling. I need to lose some LBs to fit into extra large like I used to, uh, but it fits really nice. And I love how light uh, the quality is, so uh, happy about it. Uh, okay, so we covered the giveaway. We covered the shop, which I'm sure I'll mention a bunch more and you guys will get sick of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, we haven't looked at the specs yet, so let's let's do that maybe. Um, you must live in the U.S. US. You must answer the question. You must be present to win. The facts. These are all facts. I have been picking some winners that have not been replying to the question, uh, and uh, yeah, I just choose another winner at that point. <laughs> Two out of three. Using horse milk every day. Waiting uh, for the V. So yeah, the V four hundred. I've printed a bunch of stuff for it actually. Since you mentioned, um, since you mentioned, I'll give a little preview of it because uh, I did. I never ended up making a short because Valentine's Day. Here's what I printed, uh, and this is not small, by the way. Um, this printed at 300% speed, uh, and it's just it's a fantastic print. As you can tell, everything just popped right off. Um, yeah, it's it's quite quite good. Then I went into the slicer and I, I sliced a Benchy. Uh, I got about 20 minutes out of this. I think I go much faster. If you can tell by this line, uh, I had this printing at 220, so it needs to go higher. It needs to go not higher. It needs to go. Um, it needs to print hotter uh, for that line to go away. Uh, but generally speaking, for just straight you know dragging and clicking print, uh, this is pretty good. This needs to be optimized. And then I did. Uh, the basic optimizations uh, after I, uh, what's it called, rooted the FL Sun speeder pad. Uh, so after this print, I went ahead and, and and just put on raw clipper on there. So and clipper screen, so it's, it doesn't have the FL Sun version anymore. Uh, and then I went in and tuned the machine a bit, and I printed this guy. Uh, so it has a little bit of a ghosting situation going on, but that's something we can easily tune uh, tune out. And this print it's so fast; it was like twenty something minutes. Um, yeah, once again, pretty much nearly flawless print otherwise. Just needs to some tuning because it no longer uses any of the tuning that they put on the machine. Uh, <laughs> just because that's how I tend, I tend to do everything on hard mode. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, that's a super exciting machine. Um, and it's, it's just cool. It's just cool. What's interesting is that Delta machine is about the same size as this. So... That's another interesting comparison to make as well about, you know, just how much space these type of machines take. And then what you got to consider when you're trying to buy something in this price point, because uh, uh, technically speaking with this machine unboxed, I guess with the other ones unboxed too, I will have a 300 by 300 Delta, a 300 by 300 Cartesian and a 300 by 300 Core XY machine. So it'd be kind of interesting to make that comparison as well. Um, right? Am I right? Smash the like. Yes, please. The desk mat's really nice, guys. Thanks, Zumi. T super comfy. Nice. Thank you. Look at it. Pull the pin on the V400. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. Use my link if you do. 
Uh, what's the material you use to print it? PLA? Oh yeah, that stuff is the brand new uh, copper uh, filament from 3D Max. It's a PLA plus, uh, but it's a beautiful color. I would pull the spool, spool off, but it's like in the actual printer. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful one. <laughs> it only tickled it. Uh, would you consider a tuning guide video or is that whack? Um, there's a lot of them out there. And to be honest with you, uh, I've considered it a lot uh, in, in various different ways. Uh, honestly, if you're gonna do Clipper, I would just uh, I would just suggest going to uh, the tuning guide, Ellis tuning tuning guide, and just go down the list. Uh, I know it might seem tedious, but you'll do it one time and you'll get the results. And you'll be like, okay, that makes sense. And then the second time you do it, third time you do it to other machines or whatever it might be, it gets so much easier. You don't even think about it anymore. Uh, but that Ellis tuning tuning guide is is top notch in terms of how to tune that machine because it goes to every single detail you don't have to do each one if you're having a certain problem you can just do the you know the the tuning that comes with it so ellis tuning guide coupled with orca slicer and it's built-in tuning like pressure advance and and max flow it's so good <laughs> tell me about space Ooh, ooh. uh any cubic cobra max too yeah that's that's just big uh, my Kilo hasn't been printing well at all after the OO, uh, OO TDB, TBDD mod. Uh, so one thing to check is I noticed this way later uh, and not on my machines that I have here, but people have reported that the filament path isn't perfect because some, I guess they changed plastic or they just changed the manufacturer of the direct drive um, lever and the lever no longer aligns perfectly with my old school Aquilas that I have. Like I have, I have, I've have literally the OG Aquilas. I have a bunch of them. Uh, so whenever I was designing it, it just didn't, it didn't consider all the other levers. If you can't print anything at all, or you have another machine, I have in the same wherever you got those files, uh, whether it was Thingiverse or or printables. Uh, check for my Fetter Struder 2.0. It just it's an extruder for the Aquila. But in those files, there is a lever, a printable lever. That lever was designed around both extruders, so you know that lever will also will not only be perfectly aligned with the extruder, but also it ha it adds an adjustability uh, to the spring tension. So one of the things where if there's a misalignment, the spring tension isn't the same anymore, and it kind of messes with it. So you being able to control your spring tension with that lever is just better. So I would suggest you do that or try that. Uh, where do we find that LS tuning guide? Just uh, Google. Google uh, Ellis. It's E L I E L L I S tuning guide. Or if you, even if you type in Clipper tuning guide, Ellis will come up. And it's like a whole wiki, you know? So. <laughs> it is. It's the, it's the new, uh, new formula. And I have a paper towel this time because even though I have my, my little uh, drink holders that I made, uh, it got completely drenched in, um, in water last time for mice, so just saving it. All right, let's jump into uh, checking out the marketing as we do, and then uh, let's get into the machine. So let's see what this thing, uh, let's, think, let's see what they are trying to sell us, and we'll go from there. So this is the Sidewinder X Plus, uh, Swift Productivity, Unparalleled Precision, okay? Uh, so we have 500 millimeters per, cent per uh, second Printing speed with clipper, okay. Uh, more supported materials, I guess because it's direct drive, they're saying. Uh, metal linear guide rails, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that, so that's great. Uh, that's kind of a step up from the other machines, right? Uh, 300 by 300 by 400, so this is going to be a very tall boy. Uh, let's see what else is new, okay. 300C high temp. Uh, and does that look like it's ceramic? I guess we'll see. Oh, I can see it from here. I can see this thing from here. All right, for those that follow me, you guys already know, you know what this means, right? Uh, cool, do you know if it'll work on the aluminum Creality extruder? Um, that's a good question. No, I, I did not design it around the aluminum Creality extruder. Hey, Papa's here, whoops. Zoomed out. Uh, for those that are unaware, I have a personal vendetta against this sensor. Uh, I've had three or so machines, four machines with this sensor, and I can't think of a single machine that 
was printing perfectly with this sensor. This thing just seems to be inconsistent for me. I don't know if I'm doing something, but this is the 56th machine on the table. So we'll, we'll see, maybe I'm inexperienced or something, but uh, as soon as I see this, it's a red flag for me. Um, and other people have corrected me and said that they've never had problems with it. So it's, it's all good. Maybe it is just me. It's a huge printing surface. Sleek and stable integrated design. Okay, yeah, cool. It needs these for this for this thing to be this tall. Uh, handy way of printing. So they're showing fluid, which is nice. Uh, they have their own screen software, which you know can be good or bad. We'll find out. Usually, I like this to just be raw clipper or clipper screen. Um, but fluid is very nice. We'll see that. Uh, all metal linear rails. Fantastic. Love linear rails. It looks like there's a little video here. Yeah, Plus Pro, and I believe there's a, I thought there was a bigger one, I guess not. I thought there was a 400 by 400 one, but it looks like there's just two. Unless I was thinking like Sidewinder X4, then Pro, then Plus, we'll find out. All right, so they're just kind of, they're continuing to repeat the same type of marketing. All right, so we have a screen pre-installed. Okay, quad core performance, cool, cool, cool. 10 times faster, no loss in quality. Average printing speed is 300, maximum 500 to 10,000 acceleration. Pretty fast. Seems pretty similar to something like the Creality CR10 SE, for example. I really dislike that sensor. Yeah, me too. I've, like I mentioned, I, I just, I've never run, I've never had a machine that has that sensor that's had consistent leveling. It is literally always, 100% so far, in my personal experience, been a problem. And I've always mentioned it, but I don't know. Uh, every time I do mention it, people have always, always in the comments or somewhere have said otherwise. So maybe it's just me, maybe this machine will prove us wrong. So it looks like it could do a 15 minute benchy, which would be amazing if it could do a 15 minute benchy on this machine on such a large bed slinger, that's an accomplishment that they, they should be extremely proud if, if there's a 15 minute benchy on here. Uh, pressure advance and input shaping, right? Because it's running clipper, so that stuff is easier to add by a lot. All metal dual gear extruder, direct drive extruder. Okay, perfect. That's good to hear. All metal, huh? Uh, all metal hot end. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty interesting as well. I can't tell what that is. If that's kind of like the, the rectangle kind, uh, like bamboo has, or if this is ceramic in a sense where it's a, it's a round ceramic. I kind of see a flat spot, so I, I kind of think it might be similar to what bamboo does. Uh, and based on the mounting hardware here, actually, I'm gonna say that this is a ba bamboo clone type of thing. We'll take a look at it. All right, so basically they just continue to restate the same thing over and over again and kind of give you better ways of looking at it. Easy to get started, okay. Uh, filament sensor. Print right out of the box. All right, put that in, put those on, slide that puppy on, click the antenna on, screen, done. All right, sounds good to me. What do you guys think? Good to go? Oh, it's possible Anticubic Cobra does a 14 minute benchy, nice. Yeah, Anticubic Cobra constantly pops up, like the name constantly pops up, but I don't remember what it was. I actually, one of the first machines uh, well, not one of the, among the first machines that was sent to me was the Anticubic, one of the Anticubic resin machines way back in the day, like three years ago, maybe even longer. I don't even think I had YouTube back then. Um, but I, I don't think I, ha I kept in touch with them. I don't think I have any kind of relationship with them at all. Yeah, absolutely, Matthew, Matthew, yeah. I think I, hopefully it'll help. Uh, that's what he's referring to, Zumi. He's having trouble with my direct drive extruder. It is printable. Oh, you mean like there's a, um, there's a remix for the direct drive version type of thing? There might be. I mean, not direct drive, dual gear. All right, what do you guys think? Get into it. Unbox this thing. What do you say? So this box is gonna be pretty large. Actually, let me make sure that my camera is set to be all the way zoomed out, because I don't think it is. Oh, there you go, so that's what it was. And I have focus off because of last time when we were trying to print. All right, so that, that's a little bit better, right? There we go. 
Uh, maybe I'll move it onto here. And as I unbox it, I'll kind of put things out on the table. Maybe we'll do it that way and see what it's like. All right, let's, let's do it. I got a new blade on this thing since one of the last times uh, the blade went flying past my head and into my ceiling. Hey, Tigers, Tiger Party, in, uh, Tiger Party, Tiger Flyer in here. Yeah, there he is. What's up? Yeah, just in time for the unboxing as I bump myself over here. All right, we got good foam, good foam. Let's slide that over here. All right, let's see what's good. We have our little filament sensor right off the bat on a swivel. Whoa, that thing is light. I just tossed it all the way across. We have a sample of filaments, which Printer, printer companies need to stop doing. This antenna is actually pretty good. Uh, I've had some good luck with that. High speed PLA. We got clippers. All right, and the unboxing is finished. We can now, we can now close this box. The most important part we have right here. Good old classic clippers. Uh, scraper, uh, actually the same type of scraper as Chitty Tech has which I've only seen with Chitty Tech. We have a glue stick, uh, which is nice of them to include. I have too many glue sticks, so I will keep this here. We have uh, some um, lubrication for the rails, which is fantastic. I'll get that out just in case they're not lubed. We have four screws to hold on the top of the gantry. We have a screw, I mean screw, a uh, cable tie. Uh, here's some more screws. Okay, they're all labeled. Are they labeled in the front here? Oh, they are. Okay. Yep, M5 by 40, M4 by 18. We have a USB. Does it say what it is? Also the same type of USB stick as Chitty Tech has. That's interesting. So far, there's two little micro crossovers there. I wonder if they use a similar manufacturer for the, some of the stuff. There's a small piece of PTFE tube and it's black, which is kind of interesting. I'll have that out as well, just in the case. And there is an extra nozzle. And the nozzle is a very interesting shape. Uh, it's a little bit abnormal. It's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but that is definitely an abnormal nozzle. Uh, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. If you can see that head, Let's see, come on. I thought I turned uh, turned auto on, off, go away, turn off. All right, camera, let's do global. There we goes, okay. So yeah, the nozzle is interesting. Um, we'll see what that, what that means later. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, I missed a bunch. Not sure, but what did you do? Not sure, but did you do a video on fluid install on the V400? I did not yet. I literally just unboxed the video, the machine the other day. And then, um, I had time to mess with it a little bit and that's it. And I've, now I'm here and I, yesterday was Valentine's day, so I didn't have time to do any 3D print stuff, but I plan on doing an entire video on that machine um, as soon as I can. Um, but if you go to, the guy's name is Gilus. He does a bunch of K1 um, oriented stuff, but he also has an entire wiki for the V400 and uh, the, FL, the FL Sun Sonic Pad. So I just followed his wiki essentially. Uh, so it's not something that I did myself. Like, I did it, but he, he did it. He did all the work. 
Uh, we have some more screws. Luckily, they're all labeled very neatly, and they're not just in a one bundle, so that's nice. Uh, we have some basic tools. Nothing, nothing that great, but also nice that, that they're at least included. We have a little needle. All right, all this can go back. I'll keep the screws out. The PTFE tube. I wonder what the PTFE tube will be for. We will find that out. Uh, I'm going to put the tools back in as well. Finally made it for a Hey, man. How you doing, Joseph? You got a little Buntu hat? That's cool. Nice hat. Uh, it's done. We have the nippers. That's right. Once we have the nippers, we're good. It's funny how much difference there is with these printers. My Cobra Max 2 works like a charm, but my buddy has a huge problem with the bed adhesion. Uh, well, so that's another thing. So bed adhesion specifically could change between two different rooms. If your buddy doesn't have a dehumidifier, maybe it's too humid in there. Maybe the, the ambient temperature is different than yours. Uh, maybe his isopropyl alcohol uh, has an additive in it and it's not 99.9. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things that relate to it, but also more than likely is you're doing, you're, you, you do Z offset better than him or her. That's probably the, that's probably the main one. No printer can function without them in the box. That is hundred percent correct. Um, that is why, uh, this shirt exists. Yes, I love it so much. I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with me, but this is the type of stuff that I like. <laughs> this is it right here. <laughs> That's the pinnacle. <laughs> I use mine. It works out. OK, well, there you go. Fan blowing. Yep, that could all do it. Oh, snip. That's an awesome shirt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how many 3D printers do you have? This is my 56th machine. Uh, does our artillery compete with the Bamboo A1? Uh, yeah, sure. The X4 Plus. I mean, the X4 Pro probably does. This is a larger machine. This this doesn't compete. Or the A1 doesn't compete with this. Uh, but every bed now that they made a bed slinger, every bed slinger competes with the A1. Um, if you like, if you don't mind bamboo, if you if you even bring that up, you should probably have a bamboo machine uh, because they make great machines. They have amazing support. Uh, the A1, I believe, is fully recalled, though. Uh, Alex, to answer your question, like for real, though, uh, I think the A1 is fully recalled at this point. You can no longer buy one until their cabling fiasco is resolved because they have a power cable that lights on fire and explodes. So, uh, is the X4 available outside the U.S.? Uh, it's not available anywhere, as far as I understand. I, I know that you can buy it on AliExpress for an outrageous price right now, but this machine comes out on the 20th. It'll be available for pre-order. I wanted to unbox it. Uh, I was not told that I can't, and I want to get this thing out and in my studio before uh, that time frame so that I can have some time to actually you know, have some experience with it. And one of the other reasons I chose to do this instead of some other machines that I have to unbox is because I just recently did a video on two really similar machines. And while those are fresh in my mind and I still have those in the studio, I want to have this to directly compare so that when I make a video on it, I can actually make some kind of decent suggestion instead of just telling you what their marketing says, right? All right, we got filament spool holder. Where is it manufactured? Definitely China. Hey, Demon, how you doing? I saw you were in here yesterday. <laughs> Went back to WoW. <laughs> uh, we have a, a booklet and I'm guessing a quick start guide. Yep, quick start. Looks like this is all related to their uh, actual firmware, which actually looks good. Like the UI actually looks good. It doesn't look like a big mess. Uh, it has actually still has bed wheels, which is interesting. It's kind of unexpected, to be honest. Hey, look at this. It's about time. Artillery, if you're watching, this is very good. 
Good job. Uh, we were just talking about this, right? Uh, printer com companies need to give you a metallic or technically metallic would be best. A sheet, an aluminum sheet that's exactly 0.2 millimeters or whatever they think their printer should be leveled at. They need to include it um, so that it doesn't just degrade and you could use it as a leveling tool if your printer isn't automated with leveling. Uh, this is a nice quality piece of paper uh, and they give you more than one. That's fantastic. Actually, a good example of this is Chitty Tech uh, gives you these, or at least used to, uh, give you these. They're a plastic. Uh, you can tell that I've used this one a lot and it does get marked up, but it's still functional. I've used this one to level pretty much every single machine I've gotten after getting this little card. So that's just a perfect example of how useful something this little uh, could go and how, 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 how far something like that can go. So this is a good idea. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, take this a little bit further. I came from Norath. Uh, okay, here's the screen. Looks like, you know, just like with the, um, with the Elegoo machine, it's detachable with a magnet. Yep, there we go. So we have the mount and a magnet here. It's uh, not quite as big as that machine, but this is plenty big. Uh, where's my iPhone, for example? You know, not too bad. I've grown to like the detachable, uh, detachable uh, screens. I wasn't a big fan at first, to be honest. All right, so we got foam. We have beautiful carbon. I really like that 3K carbon look. I do think this is sleeved. Uh, it's hard to say if this is real carbon or not because uh, it's a little bit more weighted than, uh, than real carbon. But for this application, it doesn't have to be carbon at all. It does look cool though. Ah, no, that's, it is kind of light. I guess the, the aluminum ends that are on here that are threaded, maybe those are like deep into it. We'll be able to see in a second. Let's see. Okay, so they go to about here. Huh. Either way, cool. This looks good. Definitely cooler than just having black, you know? At least I think. I, I love the carbon texture. All right, we have the top gantry here. I see LEDs on the top, which is nice. Come on out of here. So we have dual motors, dual Z motors, and a belt. Uh, we do have an LED uh, bar on the top. Uh, nice looking brushed aluminum extrusions. They're not just uh, they're not just gray, by the way. Here, let me see if I can show you this texture. You guys see that? They're like brushed aluminum. Very nice looking. Uh, tool head is right on here. Everything is zip tied over there for shipping, which is good. I see a huge fan in there. They fit a uh, 1520 in there. You guys see that? That's nice. Looks like a ribbon cable with a metal uh, piece over here to hold it all in place. So that's good. Giant rail. I love seeing this more and more. Uh, uh, just, you know, the, la the larger rails make things so much stiffer. That's definitely a welcome sight. And this is a completely custom extrusion. Looks like it's a 2020 extrusion on the bottom that's kind of like morphed into its own specific piece, machined. And check this out. It has uh, holes in it that are predetermined. This is cool. I haven't seen this on pretty much anything else. So that's unique to just this machine. Uh, the ends here are, is this metal too? No way. Okay, so it's aluminum, but yeah, it's it's freezing cold, so that's metal. That's impressive. Right, is it metal? Um, I'm gonna scratch it a bit. We're in a spot where we can't see. Yeah, that's metal. Okay, well that's, um, that's cool. That's uh, definitely new. Uh, even the brackets on the top here are metal. Okay, so so far the construction just based on this piece is pretty good. That's, um, that's very nice. 
How, how do you adjust the, these wheels here? It looks like maybe there's no adjustment for the wheels because this wheel is fully enclosed in metal and there's no way to adjust it in any way. Huh, I wonder if it's like spring loaded or something. Interesting, okay, there's a lot of things to unpack there. Let's set that aside for, for now. All right, I believe the only thing left is the base. And we have a leveling knob. Uh, I'm gonna take the bed off. Wow, okay, that's double-sided. Didn't expect that either. So we have a, a pretty nice looking build plate. Uh, it has alignment uh, ports here. Double-sided is definitely unexpected and appreciated. Let's put that there. So artillery is definitely stepping their game up. Also, I wanted to mention, this is my second artillery machine. I did have the Artillery Sidewinder X2 that I really liked. Technically, there was only one major quirk on that machine, um, and that was that it didn't have an aluminum bed. It had just straight glass. So the heater was attached to the glass uh, with no aluminum plate down there, um, which was interesting. It, it worked fine. I guess the, the Flying Bear has a similar uh, setup there, but. At the time, that was strange, I guess, right? How heavy is the gantry? I mean, I'm not gonna be able to weigh it, right? But I don't know, it doesn't feel too heavy, but I love the extrusions. Those are, those are something else. The extrusions are really cool. Uh, let's see, let me, let me catch up, let me catch up. Are there any other printers other than Prusa that are produced in places other than China? Uh, there is the Wuxin. Wuxin, Wexer or something. Wuxin is the brand. I don't remember what the actual name of the machine is. It's fairly expensive, but it's a premium Prusa style machine that has a bunch of like their own custom stuff on it. That's made in the United States. I know that. But yeah, there's very little. There's very little. <clears throat> hey, Kenneth, how you doing? Is it me or does it look a lot like the Elegoo? Um, no, no. So far, so far that's very different than the Elegoo. Uh, the Elegoo is definitely a bit generic uh, in that sense. The Elegoo is one of those machines that we are we should all be super familiar with because it uses the same design language as those type of machines have always used. Uh, you know, extrusions in the base all the way up. Um, it uses the, the regular wheels with the regular tensioners on the wheels. Um, Pretty much all of that is very similar to a lot of other machines, which not a bad thing, but it is that. This, that's definitely got some custom pieces that, like I said, I've never seen before. Uh, whether that's good or bad yet, I don't know. I'm just making observations as we remove stuff from here. Uh, the reason why I decided to look under it just now is because when I grabbed it, uh, I felt this piece right here, and that is the power supply. That's a different way to do that, huh? So I feel some rubber legs. Yeah, some tall rubber legs down there. So yeah, pretty standard extrusions on the inside. I can see them from here. Um, we have their own uh, large motor for the bed. It's one of those larger steppers. Uh, there's a warranty void of broken sticker, which is technically illegal in a way. Uh, I can see the board a little bit through here. I can see that it's, a, it's an MKS board. It's branded our artillery, but it has an MKS EMC on it, so that's definitely an MKS board. It has a pretty good size fan on there. It looks like we might we might as well see what's in there because this machine has some interesting pieces on it. Let's put this wheel back on real quick while while we're here. Since this wheel decided to back itself out. There is uh, six wheels uh, on this machine, just like the Elegoo. So there is a similarity there. Let's see. There we go. I guess we'll be leveling that. Uh, it is, uh, the bed is um, insulated on the bottom. And we have four mounts for the rails, and these are the larger rails, which is nice. They are, that's cool. 
We have a little drawer on the front here, tensioner, USB type C, USB four here on the side. We have our antenna. All right, let's, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what other little surprises are hiding uh, for us with this machine. Uh, I don't want to put it on its bed. Here, let's do this. Let me get this foam. Let's see if I can find a decent way to prop the machine up so that it doesn't it doesn't fall on us. Here we go. Let me go ahead and set this aside real quick. And we will start our experiments. Actually, I shouldn't be closing this because I have stuff to put back in it, but that's okay. Here, I'll move it off to the side, open it up so I can toss stuff in there and I'll clean up post stream. <clears throat> or is it just me or does it look a lot like the Elegoo? Oh, I think I read that one already. I thought it was another person that said it. Uh, let's see. That little drawer in the front, yes. Sidewinder X2, pretty good printer, but the board went out last month. Oh man. So Chad, you probably had that thing for a while then, right? Because it's been a long time since I since I featured it uh, back back when it was new. So it's it's definitely seen some stuff with that machine. It's been around the block for sure. Recently found a channel, I like the content. Uh, thank you, Kick. Um, I appreciate that. One of them. <laughs> is I like, to, I like to get in there. I like to figure out what it is that they're trying to sell us um, and kind of just go over it and, and figure it out. Oh, look at that, we're voided. All right, we're full void. There is uh, definitely a lot of screws on this thing. Um, can I still get down here? Yeah. Backwards. <laughs> no! <laughs> you wanted that warranty, huh? I have the uh, Sidewinder 2 uh, X2 and it's great. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I had a good time with that machine. The stream stopped? Um, what do you mean? Uh, looks like it's fine here on my end. Uh, it's back, wait, what? What do you mean rest in peace? Well, what's happened? This router is too cold from the weather. <laughs> it's back. Stream cut out for a few minutes was black screen. Oh no. I avoid warranties for merch. It's back now. Okay. Hey, Anthony. Okay, so we're good then. It stopped about two minutes ago. I was just yapping. I was yapping how our warranty was void and uh, I was talking about the companies that no longer send me or not no longer. They just refuse to even talk to me um, because they probably don't want me doing this. Hey, JP was buffering. I thought it was just me. You're good now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, by the way, I appreciate you guys telling me this type of stuff because there's no way for me to know. Like on my side, everything looks good. Uh, yeah, it does have some drop frames though. It does say I dropped 400 frames, so there was some time, but I, you can't see that here until you look. All right, we're back. Okay, good, good, good. Just go on. It's okay. Olaf, how you doing, man? All right. Uh, looks like we got one more screw. Oh, okay, the front over here is in fact attached. And that one is different, so I gotta make sure I keep this one to the side. Wilmar, what have you done? Five gifted memberships. Thank you so much, Wilmar. Appreciate you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. 
Hopefully it's not dropped now when when I'm thanking you. <laughs> Appreciate that. And I'm sure these uh, these five folks that are now YouTube members uh, also appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cool. All right, let's see how this comes off. Okay, nice and clean. Look at that piece, huh? Hey, Luke. Hey, Joe. Yeah, it looks like I dropped out for a minute there, but luckily the entire stream didn't drop, so we should be back. All right, let's see what we got. So, is there a brand? Okay, there's no brand on the power supply. But it does say that it's a 450. So usually these are 350s. This has a 450. So it definitely has some extra juice. Um, a little MOSFET of some sort for the bed with some quick connections. They are decent plugs. Uh, everything has terminals. Yep, everything has terminals here as well. I don't know if you guys might not be able to see that perfectly. Uh, but there you go. Now you see the terminals. Everything it has terminals and is glued, which is fantastic. It is definitely an MKS board. Uh, that is one hell of a fan. These, whoa, oh, right, that's the drawer. That is one hell of a fan right here. That is a big boy. Um... Yeah, this is good stuff. Um, these are these are fantastic boards. We'll see what uh, what their um, their configuration and clipper looks like. But I love seeing this fan. It's pointed the right direction. All of the wire management is great. This is a good, nice, clean way to do it. Everything has the correct terminals. Yeah, there is nothing nothing bad here. I mean, even even these wires are glued here. So it looks like they did, they went. Uh, unanodized not anodized down here which is fine this is not something you'll see ever so a good way to save some money uh but still the fact that this is a full frame like that means this thing is definitely going to be more rigid than some of the other ones i've been looking at lately that are plastic so fantastic um i know you guys i know i know artillery you don't want me in here uh with the void sticker there but uh, looks like you shouldn't be too scared of having people in here. This uh, it's done really well in there, and I have nothing but but pretty high praise for what I just saw in there. Fantastic. So so far, obviously we haven't printed yet, but in terms of come on, but in terms of the uh, look and feel. In terms of the finishes that I'm seeing on things, so far so good. Also, I see that these holes uh, that this goes into are slightly oval, uh, which is actually a good thing because these are sometimes tough to put in with so many connections. If one is slightly off and you tightened it, the rest are going to be off, but this means there's plenty of room to fit these in, to take them in and out very quickly. So if you do, did need to get in here, that's that's not a problem. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with a lot of these things and the way to differentiate yourself is through these little details. Also, interestingly enough, they made this whole chamber as small as they could uh, in terms of the height, right? The, this... This comes out, which means it gets fresh air. Uh, this fan sticks out, which means it gets fresh air, uh, including the entire power supply. It's kind of like isolated from the chamber when they did it this way. A lot of interesting little design decisions. Uh, I like the uh, I like the little breakaways from the cookie cutter. I guess the Art Artillery X2 at the time. Uh, when I had it, the Sidewinder X2 at the time was also kind of breaking away from the norm. At the time, it had a direct drive back when everything was bowed in. It had that glass instead of the metal on the bottom. It actually had a bunch of those little things. And this has a, a bunch of little things too. Kind of cool. All right, let's remove that. And let's get ready to put on our gantry. So I'll have this thing off to the side so that I can start to put the, those bolts in. 
and we will go from there. <clears throat> uh, JP, no, I do not. Uh, the machine actually comes out. Uh, well, it's uh, it's going to be available for pre-order on the twentieth. Uh, so I just I haven't had the time to uh, to get a price from them, and I don't think they have one publicly. The machine is for sale on AliExpress. But the shipping is two hundred thirty dollars, and the machine's five hundred fifty-seven there. So I wouldn't go by those prices. Uh, did the printer come pre-assembled? Uh, what you see right now is how it came. I haven't assembled anything yet. Uh, what's happening is I wanted to see the hardware uh, because I'm just intrigued by some of the choices that they've made so far, and. Uh, and so far, I just I'm just digging what what they got in here. I hit the thumbs up button. And encourage others to do the same. I appreciate that, Larry. Thank you very much. Lord Boo, yes he would. Yes he would. Wow, is this the Biblical A1 killer? Hey, Jesper, I, I don't know about that, but uh, so right now the A1 doesn't exist because it was recalled across the world. So technically, any machine is an A1 killer at the moment. <laughs> the A1 killed itself. Uh, Flash Forge is working on an AMS. I think everyone is working on an AMS. Uh, surprisingly, I don't actually. I don't know if you're going to be surprised or not, but I've asked a lot of manufacturers that I talk to, and pretty much all of them have said that. Well, they, they all have said yes and no. It's in development, but no one, no one has given me a single clear uh, yes at all. But a lot of them are definitely. Hey, Gryfang, how you doing? Companies don't want us to look into electronics. I'm like, exactly. Well, who knows? Who knows? What's the build volume? It's 300 by 300 by 400. So, very big. When I see a voice sticker, I instantly see whether 100% instantly did it. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, so, several things. Uh, the simple ones are check your belts. Sometimes, if your belts are too loose, it could cause skipping. Uh, the other ones, if your belt tension is fine, uh, you might be printing too fast. If you're printing too fast and your steppers and your just mechanisms can't keep up, your mechanics, it will also skip. Uh, sometimes if it happens later on in the print, it could be overheating. And uh, I have videos actually on how to reduce uh, the voltage that's going to your uh, steppers. If it's a clipper, you can even do it in uh, the clipper. Well, I guess if you're running UART or not. Maybe that's a little bit too complicated, but the first things I would check is belt tension. If the belt tension is fine, I would slow it down, see if it's still skipping. If it's still skipping, then maybe it's catching on the edges of a print uh, because of curling. So maybe it's a cooling thing. There's a couple trickle down things that you can do um, to check for uh, missing steps, uh, but it all depends on how it's missing steps and why. So first belts, second, slow it down. Third would be heat and then check to see if your cooling is up to par because maybe the nozzle's catching on the print and then it's causing skips. No, no, 300, 300, four, 300, 300, 400. Mostly looking at the 5M non-pro. Yeah, I mean, that thing is so cheap. 299 is unbelievable for that machine. It's fast, it's reliable, it's good stuff. Haha. <laughs> Nice. That's the best kind. Absolutely, Joe. Thank you. I appreciate the support, man. All right. Let's get this on here. Uh, Jerry, uh, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty impressed so far with some of this interesting stuff that they're doing. Uh, I know you have one of these machines. Um, oh, it looks like I have to, un I have to cut that zip tie off because that's going to be in our way. But they've made some pretty interesting design decisions on this thing uh, and material decisions that I haven't seen on pretty much anything else. Uh, just the rails alone are a huge touch. Uh, this entire X uh, gantry over here is very refreshing. It's new in the way that they did it um, and their own, which is, which is kind of cool. Is there another zip tie somewhere? What am I missing here? I've got to move this puppy up. Oh yeah, there is another zip tie. Here, let's gently lay her down. There we go. Pick that back up.
Yeah, so there's been uh, definitely a couple very interesting machines lately. And that definitely makes doing this very fun. All right, what is holding us back now? Is there like a screw that's holding everything or is this just moved down a ton? Let's see, can I just sit this down and kind of give it a little pushy push? Yep. All right. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, we need some hardware. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I'm happy with all the linear rails, it's such a large printer, yes. Yeah, the linear rails are definitely a standout because they're just large linear rails, which is nice. Um, but uh, more importantly, this entire X, uh, X uh, chassis here, X axis, is pretty impressive. Okay, I'm really reaching out here. Oh, and I grabbed the wrong one. Okay, got it. All right, Hodo. Let's see what you got, baby. I haven't charged this Hodo in ages yet again. Because this thing just keeps on going. Where are we at with this? There we go. Okay, one in. Let's do another. Uh, for those of you guys just joining in while I'm doing this, uh, check out the pinned comment all the way at the top of the chat. Uh, you should be able to find a link that takes you to a gleam.io link uh, where we give away a spool of 3D Max uh, filament from 3D Max, PLA Plus, uh, at the end of the stream. So if you plan on sticking around and you're in the United States, um, maybe check out that link and get yourself in there. Also, if you guys like the shirt that I'm wearing or this super cool mug, check out a uh, shop at uh, 3D Print SOS and uh, maybe get yourself a little merch all while supporting the channel and get your, getting yourself something pretty cool in return. Nice. Man, this Hodo. I'm surprised every single time I use it by how powerful it is. It has been a pretty, pretty cool device. All right, so now we can put this thing on here straight. Let's see. Pretty good. Trying to kind of rock it. No, it's got... It's got a nice soft feet on it as well. All right, let's get this on here. Uh, we need something that has four. I see two, 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 and they're all different. Are they different sizes? Oh, it's probably two long ones and two short ones. Yep. And that's because we're not looking at the instructions. But these four have washers, so this is the ones that we need. All right, so you want these things to be loose. Uh, should we put them on the outside? We're going to put them on the outside. Yep, that looks right. So we'll tighten them up there, and then we will tighten both sides as we go. Oh, you guys can't see this on the screen. I will move the camera in one second. Dun, 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 dun. Good song. Here we go. <laughs> I was just going to recommend read the instructions. No way. I, I, I do not take that recommendation. <laughs> Are the rods actual carbon fiber? They are on the outside, although the ends kind of have a lot of weight to them. So I'm guessing they're kind of like sleeved on the inside with aluminum. If there's two motors, there better be a belt on top. There is. There is. Also, uh, that wouldn't be a problem with Clipper. You would do a Z-tilt type of scenario and that would actually be really good for leveling technically. 
but yeah, it's always annoying to have them out of tune uh, if that's not incorporated into the leveling sequence. So I totally get it. All right, while I'm down here, right? That's what she said. I'm gonna plug this in. Uh, let's go single motor over here. And here we have a bunch of plugs. Uh, I might rotate this to show you guys so that you see it. Nice little, uh, nice little pieces of tape covering up all those cables so they're not dangling anywhere. Oh, machine got heavy with everything plugged in and on top of itself. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so right over here, let's get the bit out of the way. We have three plugs. One is for the motor down here. And they are all keyed and different shapes, so you can't really plug them in in any other way. There we go, we got one, this guy goes here, and this guy goes here. Yeah, so there's a two pin, a three pin, and a four pin plug, so you can't mess those up. Just make sure they're down so that none of this catches on anything right there. So it looks like there's a little uh, cable tie right here to keep them all in place, so that's nice. I did just notice that there is a rubber a nozzle uh, wipe right here, which is nice. That means that they are going to have their own custom clipper uh, start sequence, which is always nice to see. All right, so the way that these rods uh, actually work, and what we'll do is we'll get them somewhat where they need to go, and I'm gonna tighten this. So I'm gonna screw, oh, right, okay. I'm just blabbering without you guys seeing anything. I'm sure you guys know how to do this, but. So the easiest way to do it is because we have this side to unscrew down here. What we do is I take this nut and I kind of jam it all the way and then I'm gonna tighten while holding it. There we go. So that's nice and tight. I'll do the same thing on this side, tighten it. There we go. So that is nice and tight. And we need to tighten these two. So let's get that in the general area. There we go. That's tight. In the general area. Where are we? Where's that hole? Here we go. Whoops. Of course. Of course, this thing's huge. Not as big as some of the other ones, but definitely, definitely big. All right, so to get that over, we need the longer screws. Uh, the rods are light, but I don't think they're carbon fiber. Yeah, I think they're wrapped in carbon fiber. Anyone have a price? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's trying to compete with all those machines you mentioned, but no price as of yet. We'll find out on the 20th, though. Uh, like I mentioned, I just wanted to have this machine out and usable. Um, and, you know, it's either me unboxing it by myself or me unboxing with you guys. And I would much rather unbox it with you guys. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> Include drumsticks with the kit. Nice. Would you prefer carbon? For this, for this it does not need to be carbon. It, there's no need for it to be uh weight saving i mean carbon is very rigid so that would be nice but for this example even though this was just a 2020 extrusion that would be fine uh, i wonder how the ringer will be because it's slinging around a lot of weight uh yeah we'll see but i just purchased two mugs and a work mat wilmar you are you are the mvp of today man i, I appreciate you so much thank you for showing support to the channel uh, it means a lot to me, and I hope you enjoy those things. I hope you enjoy them. That's that's cool. Go to tend to my resin printer. Ah, resin. Ah. Added Chitty Mac, Chitty Chitty Tech X Max Three this week. Ooh, and it's been flawless. Nice. Good to know. Yeah, I don't have the X. I have uh, 
I have the plus, I have two pluses, and I just gave one to a buddy of mine today, actually. Um, fantastic machines, I really enjoy them. Uh, flawless ABS prints with that heater. So this one needs to be screwed in. Let's see how many turns. Looks like two turns. That's perfect, so we'll do that, and let's tighten it. And then I will go ahead and tighten this nut right over here. And actually that little wrench that comes with it would have been perfect. Uh, but I will just use these, these channel locks here. Bam, okay. And let's flip this baby over and do the other side as well. So this one needs the opposite. This needs to be unscrewed and then screwed inward. A few turns. Let's see, that looks good. Okay. And now let's tighten this. Looks like I need to unscrew that and tighten it first. Now we got some serious, like, jazzy, jazzy little, little ambient action going on. This is the type of stuff I like to listen to when I'm, like, working. Speaking of work, I think I will have to do, actually, a video in my office at one point. So you guys will get to see where I work on a daily at some point because I have a machine there that I'm testing that I can't test here because you can't see it. I'll trade a 55 gallon drum male horse milk for the X plus three. Wow. That's pretty epic. Hey Fitter, do you think that the pellet three Palette 3 is better than the AMS or listen if the palette the palette's been out for a very long time if the palette was really good uh, and good for its price because it has always been really expensive then people would be talking about it left and right uh, I don't think there's anything better than the AMS at the moment um, I think the chameleon is making some waves uh, because it's really simple it can be set up on any machine especially if it's running clipper specifically if it's running clipper uh, so there's something there. I don't have personal experience with any of them, unfortunately. Um, so I can't really say. Uh, but but the best way to look at it is if there was an AMS that was as good as the Bamboo AMS, then we would all know about it uh, because everyone would have one on their non-Bamboo machines, right? So I just don't think that exists yet. I have about 15 kilogram ASA on my X plus three and I've not used any glue or other adhesive helpers. The chamber heating fan is a treasure. I, I agree. I, I still do use glue, but mostly for just the security measure at this point. I don't actually, re I, I've actually not reapplied uh, to this bed or the one at my office. I actually, I don't even remember the last time, um, but I applied it one time. I baked it in at hundred degrees for like an hour. Um, and now that it's baked in, uh, th I, that's the only way that I print on it. So I, I've actually not printed anything on there except for ABS and ASA at this point. The only AB, the only PLA prints that I've done on it has been like for testing for, for that, for my original video. So elephant milk is healthy. That's a new one. We're really getting into all the milks. You guys are milk connoisseurs. Uh, okay. We got the top here. We got this on. Uh, what do we need to do? This needs to be plugged in. Uh, no, this is the sensor. Okay, so let's do let's do the top here. Is this like Creality where they pops in? No, this is not like Creality. This must have its own screws. It does, and it probably has specific holes. It looks like. Uh, let's see. Does this f f uh, go forward facing? No, it's reverse facing. Uh, I need to lower my table because I cannot see up there. There we go. 
Uh, yep, there is screws there. This is not the right size. Oh, another good song. We're getting lucky with all the random tunes today. This one's a good chill one. Nice. Uh, okay, and we have this guy. This has these the special screw. Uh, let's see how this one attaches itself. Aha, uh -huh. okay, easy. This has a pivoting screw. Yeah, so this gives it a little, little playroom there. How is there just like a random conversation every live stream? <laughs> yeah, Jake is as surprised as everyone else. Yeah, the chat the chat sometimes goes into all kinds of dark, dark, dark spaces. All right, that's that. Let's plug in this uh, the sensor here. There we go. All right, we can get the table back up now. There we go. So you guys see what it looks like. We got it plugged in. Uh, all right, let's see what's left. Everything's plugged in left and right. Uh, these guys are on nice and stiff. Uh, we got the top. Okay, so let's do the antenna on the side here. Nice and simple. And then we have the screen. Okay, antenna on. I'm gonna tilt this my way just a little bit. I guess we'll have to find out what this guy is for. Uh, no more screws. Did I miss a bag? I did. Put these back in there. Uh, yes, Zumi, many times. I'm rocking out right now to this tune. I got a blast thing down here. Uh, anyone into uh, EDM at all? Anyone into Excision? Uh, he's been making some waves with his uh, with the uh, latest show that he did with the beautiful art. It's been blowing my mind. Seen Excision live a couple times, maybe two, maybe three times. All right, screen. Looks like it can go even, even more. I thought it was. Oh, there we go. All right, this should be it. Wow, how far does that go? All right, screen. Let's plug that in. Is it this way? Nope, it's not this way. Gotta be that way. Okay. ATB! Classic, man. ATB. Wow. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of AT. I haven't heard any ATB stuff from... Wow. Early 2000s? Tiesto, never, I've never been a fan into house. I, I, I used to listen to house all the time back in the day. One of my buddies is a house DJ, but 
Never, never got really into it. I like the heavier stuff because it reminds me of like high school, uh, corn, Limbisca, Lincoln Park, all that type of stuff that I used to listen to. Deftones, um, Trust Company, like that kind of stuff. It kind of reminds me of that same energy. So I listen to more bass oriented music. Oh yeah, Zach's been really getting into it. Subtronics, yeah, Excision's crazy. Liquid Stranger, yeah. There's a lot. That's also a problem is there's a lot. So anyone who listens to EDM obviously knows Skrillex. I, I get it. Um, it's a love and hate thing, whatever. I've been following him since, since uh, I guess, when he became Skrillex at first. But some the latest thing that he put out, the latest project that he put out, I know you guys might not be a fan of him anymore, or maybe you guys are, but check out... Uh, his uh, live play uh, of um, here of his latest album, uh, this right here. So this Quest for Fire basement set. This is like, first of all, he's mixing with no headphones. Uh, if you guys know anything about this dude, this is this guy is an absolute master. Like. He's just he's just incredible at what he does, and uh, if you the more you listen to it, the the better this stuff gets, especially with headphones. It just I, I love the whole thing. The whole vibe is just awesome. <clears throat> Tiesta goes hard. Yep, one of these like. Tink, 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 tink. Uh, I wish they would give an option to go fully wireless touchpad. Didn't someone do that? I think someone just recently did that, didn't they? It has some some amount of battery life when you remove it from the thing. Uh, I don't remember who did it, but it wasn't it wasn't a printer manufacturer. I think it was a third party. I don't know who Teenage Bottle Rocket is. I gotta check that out, Tiger. No Tool. Uh, my all my buddies listen to Tool. Uh, somehow I've escaped uh, onto the sides of Tool. Uh, they, they've seen them live. Uh, I just. For some reason, no. I think when everyone was listening to Tool, I was into Rammstein. And uh, for many ages, I've, see, I've seen Rammstein twice uh, as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't know, I don't know what it was about Tool that never kind of took me in. I understand why people really like him, as in like Maynard. Uh, I, I get it. I just, I don't know. Not for me. Panda Touch. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, like clearly, like first of all, Big Tree Tech's constantly pushing. Like they're constantly pushing all this new stuff. It's it's really fantastic, and I think I think it'll catch on. That type of stuff will catch on for sure. Quest for Fire isn't that old? Uh, no, it's this this year, right? Well, not this year, 2023. But specifically, Zumi, that mix, like him mixing the entire thing live. Uh, you know, all the transitions are manual with no headphones. Just going off the rip. He, obviously, he knows what's coming next. He set it up. It's his playlist. Uh, but he's a master DJ. Like, just in terms of uh, DJing goes. And that's that's aside from being a master producer and drum engineer. Like, the dude is just, I don't know. Maybe I like him too much. Maybe I'm like fan fanboy type style. Um, but crazy. And I, I, saw, I, I saw him when he was first popping, like before he got really popular. And it was crazy good, you know, then. Because <laughs> of fire the movie. Oh, okay. I don't know about the movie. No, 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 no movie. I don't know about the movie. No, no, no. I actually didn't know there was a movie. Uh, considering I was born in '87, I wouldn't know that one. Mine hearts, Brent. Yes. Yeah, it's a good, good classic right there. Um. Yeah, Rammstein. Uh, huge fan. I remember actually one of my projects back in high school. Uh. It was, I think it was like a design pro. Oh no, it wasn't high school. It was early college. I made made a DVD. Like we were supposed to make a DVD, and we made a, it was a it was a, pro, a, um, a partner project, and we made uh, I think it was Rosenrot, the album. Uh, Rosenrot uh, was was that Rosenrot was the one with the um, with the submarine, right? I think we made that entire uh, what's it called? Not playlist. But like we made a DVD menu based off Rosenrot, and like we used a bunch of their art and did, did our own, and it was like you were in a submarine. There was all these menu things. It was cool. 
I actually should dig that up somehow. I actually don't know how I would. Yeah, nothing, man. That dude is crazy. Like, credit where credit is due. Uh, he's on a whole different level than most. There, I think there's only a few, like, a, a lot of people mention Aphex Twin, which is, you know, the, one of the earlier uh, earlier guys, and he's uh, Sunny. He always mentions uh, that that was his biggest uh, influence. I, I don't know. I think there's only, like, a handful of dudes that are on his level, in my personal opinion. So young you are. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Ross has my top five. Yeah, used to be for a while. I haven't listened to them in a while, although, you know, I keep up with everything they do. And then Till has his own thing. Till is constantly posting uh, new tracks. All right, let's, uh, let's add this cable. I believe... I believe this goes in the front here. I really hope that one clip is for this, because this... This, uh, this is going to be a big floppy mess over here. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. You guys see that? Can I just move, just move on my pinky? That's great. All right. Let's get this plugged in. Click. Click. And then let's slide this in here. Very nice. I kind of wish there was some way to attach this. And I guess you can't. I guess you couldn't attach this. This you could. Okay, I guarantee you that's what this is for. And I guess it's finally that time to look at this manual. I just want to see where you attach that cable. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, cool. Okay. This goes back here. It goes this way. And come on. Plug, plug. There we go. And then this gets held in with this guy. You're born eight years after I graduated. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to laugh at you like that. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm 36. I'm at that age where I feel older, but a lot of people tell me I'm not. Does that make sense? Like, uh... I know there's still some time to go, but I feel like I've had enough experiences already that have been quite humbling in my life. So, I get it. I know why you're saying these things. And I respect them. Alright, I need to go back in the manual again. I want to see which wire is actually held with this. Uh, it is the whole thing, according to this. There we go. This is what I'm trying to find right here. So it looks like they both go through and that goes down. Okay. So we will get this in there like that. Oh, and this goes down, right? Like that. Put that in there. Can we kind of squish this cable? Yes. That goes there. Ah! I lost it. I lost it. I found it. Okay. There we go. Got it. Use of directions. <laughs> Unsubscribe. <laughs> ah. My kids are Fetter's age. Hey, you know what? You know what? An old dog can learn some new tricks sometimes. Also, you know, I have great respect for my elders. 
And I would never disrespect you based on your age, sir. Or ma'am. And I hope I pass that on to my offspring. Uh, Jake, no, we don't. Uh, I, have a, I have a general idea based on some other stuff I saw online. Uh, but uh, this is going to be available on the 20th. So we don't have the clear uh, price for that just yet. Um, however, I suspect it's going to compete with everything in this price range. I know that's not very helpful, but it's true. All right, let's see if I can get this to reach. It looks like I can't. How much further can I go? This has to go underneath for it to reach. Let's see. Okay, I can do it. All right, we're plugged in. Uh, let's see. Did we end up using this? No. Can this go in here? No. Can this go in the bottom? No. Okay, so this, this little PTFE tube... Uh, that came with this is for the inside of the hot end. Speaking of the hot end, we didn't go into there yet. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's put that off to the side. We don't need any of this stuff anymore. Uh, this goes here. We are going to need this USB stick, I'm guessing. Let's put that in there just so that we know. Uh, power cable... I'll throw over there because I'm going to need it later. Let's do a little bit of a cleanup real quick since assembly is done. Uh, okay. Let's do the bed. Uh, let's take a look. Actually, before I do that, let's take a look into the hot end. And for this, we can use the smaller Hodo. Hey, Pedro, I found your channel by watching Adventure 5M unboxing while waiting for mine to arrive. Since getting it, uh, getting it, have you used it much? And what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I have. Uh, I definitely have been using it. So it's one of those things where if I need something really fast and I don't want to fiddle with anything, like I don't care about the settings, it just needs to be printed. I have found that that machine in that specific instance is really reliable. Uh, I still use their slicer uh, because we're still all waiting for the open source. Obviously they say that they've open sourced it and technically speaking, they did release their firmware, but they did not give us any access to the software itself. Uh, so we still don't have SSH, we can't get fluid. Well, even if we can get fluid, we can't get it, uh, the Wi-Fi feature to work with Orca, even though the printer is in Orca and you can definitely get the files from Orca. I want it to be wireless. So I'm waiting to give a better evaluation once they fully uh, actually open source the machine because my opinion on that is they've taken an open source project and are making money off of it without it being actually open sourced and available to us. And I don't like that. But otherwise, the machine itself, mechanically, it's back here, really good. I'm a, I recommend it. I'm a fan. It's very easy to use. Uh, the quality is good. Uh, they've improved it with time, with uh, firmware. Like, it's just gotten better. So, I'm definitely digging it. Uh, two screws, and this thing comes off, which is nice. They didn't make that a hassle. Yeah, we got a 5015 fan in here, but it's the... The bamboo style where the not the opening is larger, so that's worth noting. Holy heat sink, Batman. Check that heat sink out. Uh, let's get closer into here. Alright, so when I made that prediction that this thing was going to be a bamboo clone on the bottom, that's partially correct. That is a bamboo style uh, block, which I guess, uh, explains, uh, explains the nozzle. Uh, this has, I guess that's a 30 mil fan. Yeah, that's a 30 mil fan. That is quite the heat sink. That's substantial. Uh, this extruder is very interesting. Uh, there is a hole here on the side. And if I knew any better, I would say that you could put a cutting tool in here later on i know this is gonna be sideways and okay, let me try to do it correctly well wire won't reach all right might be hard to see on the screen but you guys see this opening this opening has a line through it where it goes to that so i'm guessing later on that could be used for some kind of tool uh to cut filament um nice and smooth in there 
yeah, has a nice little sister board. This heat sink is crazy talk. Like, <laughs> this is a, a monster heat sink. Uh, so yeah, that's not cloned from, from a bamboo at all, but uh, the block definitely looks, oh yeah, okay, that's a clone. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a clone. It's got the little heater on the side. Yeah, so that explains the funky nozzle. Okay, that's fine. At least we know it will work. Uh, and what is this little guy? Is that an LED? Maybe that's a little LED, we'll find out. Yeah, okay, this is pretty good. Very simple setup, very straightforward. I like that they didn't hide it too much. It's very easy to get in there. Look at that, so easy to put back on. There's no crazy clips, uh, no nonsense. That's good. Like I said, uh, so far everything is aligning with, I dig what they're doing and I like the little bits of uh, little bits of differences here because that means they didn't just you know copy and paste this is this is their own stuff which is nice what's going on here why are we not aligning it's not on okay hold on i must have put this one on too early There's like a little notch on this side to align this thing. And is there a notch on this side? No, there isn't. So let's put this side on first. There we go. And now this side will align because it has a notch. Yep. Okay, so left side first. And this is so smooth that it's crazy. Can you guys see this? How's the tension? Tension's good too. It's nice. All right. So let's see. NEMA 17 or 14? Uh, on the bed, it's the larger one. 17. The rest are all 14s. And this is a, what's this thing called? 36 or something? Someone else. Nice name. So excited of a new wave of 2024 printers, my three mega. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's an amazing amount of new machines coming out. I have the X1 V4, Fernando, nice. Old school, baby. What about the nozzle? Is it a volcano? I showed it earlier. It's the same size as a volcano, it might be a little bit different, but it is some kind of proprietary looking nozzle. Like just the shape, uh, the hexagon shape uh, is very small. I think it might be a bamboo style nozzle, if that makes sense. From Magnum Edition Pro. Okay, Jake, yeah. Quadruple my prince. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see, he's a big fat finger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. There's an unalive body. Yeah, there is. There is a few unaliveness behind me back there. Nice, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good, Zoomy. 14 is smaller than it, yeah, the 14 is the smaller one. Start on a stream, maybe best you clean up the. <laughs> nice. You ever printed a custom fan? But yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I used to design a few myself for the Aquila. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do a resistor. There's these uh, buck converters. They're very inexpensive. They're also called step-down converters. Very easy to mount elsewhere, closer to the board. Uh, that way you don't have to run, uh, you don't have to put it up top somewhere. But then you can manually reduce from 24 to 12. But also, just get a 24 volt fan. Uh, definitely don't, you know, don't buy 12 volt fans or five volt fans for 3D printing. There's plenty of options in 24. Uh, and they're, they're really good fans. Uh, GDS time is one, Zach. GDS time, that's uh, that's what you want. Nice, that's that's a long time. I've been in it for, I guess, about six years now. So that's, you know, almost double. That's that's awesome. You've been definitely, you've been definitely at it. Actually, uh, you might really like the Anet A8 um, that I have waiting to be put together um, for the past like three months now. Okay, I think this thing is ready to go. Let's chug that. One thing I did want to see is uh, before the stream uh, started, 
I did have this finish in the K1 Max. This is a 300 by 300 print. Oh, look at that. It's nice. Uh, let's see. This is a piece that goes right here. Bam. All right, so I just have one hip left to print and then one more edit, and that is gonna be completed. Unbelievable. All right, let me have a seat here, and let's uh, let's power this thing on. Uh, let me put you guys somewhere. Oh, the screen's on this side. Ah, oh, that's kind of a bummer. All right, let's have it like this maybe, and then uh, we'll change the view as we go. Also, can you, uh... hey, how about you zoom over here? There we go, yeah. like. Focus on this thing. It always likes to focus on uh, on the back back there. Uh, in that case, since this thing's gonna be sitting now, let me turn off autofocus. And let's focus it right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's better. Uh, right, there it, also, uh, Noctua now makes a 40 millimeter 24 volt fan, so. Cool print. What about the speed for PLA? Uh, on which machine? This machine? This machine is apparently saying it can go, uh, what is it, 500, 600 millimeters per second? I doubt it's gonna go that fast, but uh, it'll probably do 300 if you really wanted it to. I'm just worried about the size of the bed slinging, you know? Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it does. Okay, let's, uh, let me take this off the screen, put it down here. Let me get the leveling paper and let's uh, let's hit the power button. All right, we got the artillery logo. You guys can see this, right? Yep. Whoa, super bright LEDs. That's very, very bright. They are the uh, uh, the what's it called? The uh, um, what are the LEDs close that are really close together? What are they called that are really close together? Neopixels, Neopixel LEDs. That is a big bet for those speeds. Yes, it is. <laughs> the cover flying bear. <laughs> yeah, I like that cover. Is the beanie the classic uh, flying bear beanie? Yes. Yes, that's true. All right, so we do have a little LED on the bottom, as you guys can see. Uh, it does give off some kind of funky green lighting as well. Is that like a reflection from the PCB or something? Uh, but that's okay. Uh, whether to enter the boot interface is what we're, we're told. Whether to enter the boot interface is fun. Um, yes. Self-check, XY detection. Okay, that's good. Uh, click the cancel button and the machine will restart. I'm not gonna do that. So it says one out of six. So it moved the X, it moved the Y, and now I'm guessing it's gonna do the Z, yep. I did the Z, the nozzle is very close, but not actually touching. I do like that the both the intake right here and the exhaust have openings. I've seen some machines come out lately some uh, that don't have openings for the air, which is mind boggling. Now it says nozzle heating detection and I can instantly smell it. Uh, there is a fan running now that I can feel and that's that's that motherboard fan. That motherboard fan is, I'm not gonna say it's loud, but it's one of those big boy fans. Uh, yes, this is also true. They are very pricey, but that's true. But GDS time is what I've been going with. Is that because the USB drive is plugged in? Uh, I don't know. I just plugged it in just because I figured there's going to be files on there that we need. Tiger. Uh, Zoom in. I got it focused manually now, so it should be it should be focused right there. Uh, what's better, Artillery, Anticubic, Creality, or Elegoo FDM? Seems that Anticube is garbage. It might, it depends on what you're looking for specifically. At the moment, I don't think there's anything 
real out of these brands that's touching the k1 and the k1 max uh i think those are kind of like up there at the moment but that's the only core xy out of these brands so now you're talking artillery anacubic and elegoo uh elegoo has some quality stuff i love the what they're doing with clipper and kind of like adding everything onto their machine i do kind of like at least a glance at a glance the slight i don't want to say innovations but the slight tweaks on things that this machine has um I don't have any anacubic machines, so I can't say. Uh, so out of those that you listed, I would say Creality probably, uh, because they're new machines, especially like the CR10 SE, uh, even the, the Ender 3 SE for a super budget option. Uh, and then the K1 series, I mean, they're, and the K1C that just came out, I've really been enjoying right here. Um, I don't know, I think it's, it depends on the price and what you actually need to print. If you don't need an enclosed machine, if you're just gonna stick to PLA, I, I doubt the K series makes much sense because you don't need to like spend the extra money on an enclosed machine if you're not gonna print ABS or ASA, you know? Given how affordable XY is becoming, do you think there'll be a place for bed slingers in a couple of years? I think there will always be a, a place for bed slingers because they're so simple. Uh, the core XY machines are hot right now, but they're very fresh. Some are under a year old. And uh, a bed slinger starts to go kind of wacky over after a year, right? After all those cheap parts start going. The Core XY machines that are coming out, they're made of the same parts. So they're gonna start going bad and people are gonna realize that they're hard to work on. They're tougher to work on. Uh, there's a lot more parts to them. Uh, and a bed slinger is cheap, very simple, uh, very easy to work on. So I think for certain applications and for people that don't need an enclosed machine, I think bed slingers, because of their price point, are going to be relative, rel not relative, but uh, they're going to be, they're going to be, um, they're going to be good for a while. GDS time is what I used to. Yeah, even on my Vorons. Honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely, dude. Ask, ask anytime, man. You guys, like I said, if you guys can find me on, uh, on Discord or. Um, if you're a YouTube member or a Patreon, you can always uh, message me directly. Hey, Mike Jones, haven't seen you in a minute. How you been, man? Uh, how would you compare the 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 5M? So uh, they're actually really close, except for the 5M doesn't have an enclosure. Uh, the K1 has that bit of quality with the front glass and just the nice tight package. It looks better. I know that doesn't mean anything, but it just does. The the 5M is like raw. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't even have finished sides, you know? Uh, yes, you can print them, but then again, you have printed sides. So now we're talking 5M, 5M Pro versus the K1. That's probably much more close uh, in a comparison. Uh, that you could pick either one. At the moment, I would pick Creality just because they fully open sourced their firmware and the, uh, and, uh, the adventure is still you know, we still don't have root access. We can't use our tool that we bought. We bought. You can use it, but you don't own it. They own it. I bought recently K1 Max because the Country Bamboo PMP is three times more expensive than this one. Yeah, K1 Max is good. I love mine right there. In fact, all the stuff that's printed behind me that's giant and all of those spools have been printed on the K1 Max. In close, I would look at Chitty. Yes. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Uh, wait for the nozzle temperature to heat to 210. Okay, it is. And start adjusting and start adjusting the nozzle temperature. I mean, it's there. Let's hit the next step. In order to ensure the accuracy of the model, the system will carry out manual leveling. Okay. Next step. Please make sure there's no sundries in the nozzle. Yo. <laughs> I like that text. <laughs> <laughs> um that that's a good shirt <laughs> uh hey jack black i do <laughs> uh gonna win me some filament please do sir i appreciate the way you explore the gambit of printers core bed slinger delta all of them let's nice see an unbiased uh, variety of printer content that isn't brand heavy a anthony i literally strive for that statement that you just said so i appreciate it i still pretty much on a daily get people saying that i'm some kind of shill uh that they're uh, unsubscribing because i'm clearly paid i don't take any form of payment from any of these manufacturers i don't want to uh, if it's gonna, if I do a commercial for some reason, it's gonna be a totally different format than than any of this stuff. 
Um, I, I don't sign anything with any of these companies because I don't want to be controlled in any way. What I say it is at their detriment of them sending me these machines technically. So I just want to get as many of them as I can to, to, to get a cool idea of what this industry is doing. I just, I find that part very fun for me. I think anyone can print nowadays. Um, and I think my, my take on 3D printing at the moment is to check out as much hardware as I can. I love that stuff. You have a new subscriber, nice, welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, please make sure there's no sundries on the nozzle. It's still boggling my mind. <laughs> oh man, I had to Google that. <laughs> Check your nozzle for sundries. Uh, yes, I still have two of them. Uh, actually, well, uh, today I gave uh, my old one to a buddy of mine. So yes, I still have this one right here. Still use it. Oh man, your thoughts on the K1C? It's the best one. It's the best K series. Uh, great machine. Uh, I had a misconception about the nozzle because their marketing was whack. Uh, the nozzle is just, it includes the heat break and uh, it's easy because it comes out easier because the heat break is attached and you don't have to take the whole hot end apart to get to the heat break. And that their marketing used to say, easy to remove nozzle or something. So that was my big misconception. Now that I know that that's not the case and it's just a nozzle with a heat break. Now they're available on AliExpress, by the way. Uh, I like it much more. And I've been printing carbon fiber on it. It has carbon fiber on it right now uh, from printing. Uh, whoops, uh, have you, you seen the positron? I've seen it, I, I've played with it in person. Super cool. Um, I talked to LDO at uh, a recent con about it, but at the time they weren't ready uh to even i guess talk about any kind of relationship with it so at some point i would love to to build one uh we'll see we'll see how how that works so please make sure there's no sundries on the nozzle um i don't see any sundries uh i don't know what that means i'm gonna hit next step please wait for the platform and nozzle position to initialize you know guys i'm noticing a lot of these manufacturers some of the new machines can you guys see this uh, I don't know if it's because they have to deal with m m multiple languages, but you guys see that widow in the word nozzle? The, the E is on a separate uh, a separate line there. It's called a widow. Oh, look at that. Um, that part bothers me as a graphic designer, uh, as a user experience uh, designer, because I, I don't know, is there, there's only a handful of, of manufacturers that have really done a, a phenomenal job with their UX and UI. Uh, and I feel like almost always it's like a bad translation and the text goes to the wrong line and it just takes away from your confidence in the experience. I know it's very little and has nothing to do with how the printer is going to perform. Uh, but those little things are the user experience. You know what I mean? I think they're important. Sundries. <laughs> sundries is pretty good. Uh, sundries. Various items not important enough to be mentioned individually. A drugstore selling magazines, newspapers, and sundries. Look at that. We learned something new. Thank you. <laughs> this one open source? I don't think so. Uh, but they're using Clipper and we have Fluid, so it's open source to that degree. I feel ripped off. I didn't get any sundries. All right, so this is cool. So we're doing a manual leveling because this bed has so many uh, leveling knobs on it. And it looks like it's going to take us to various spots. So let's just do point one. And it looks like we're going to have to take our little paper here and go old school with it. Uh, let's see how, wow, I have to unscrew quite a bit. Oh, there we go. Okay, right there. Let's go to the front. Really fast movement speed. That's nice to see. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's go next. Kind of interesting that there's six of these things. Okay, that's good there. Let's go here. Oh, a little too much. Right there. Let's go to the back. Oh, wrong one. I wanted this one. Whoa, so fast. 
The movement speed's actually pretty fast. Oh, here we go. Okay, right here. Now let's go to, where are we at, this one? I haven't done this in a while. All right, let's check the midpoint and then I'll go over really quickly. Since we're here, I might as well do it right. That's, that's not the best there. So let's, oops, let's be sure that we move this thing here. Let's, let's, let's do this one more time. Oh, okay. That's, that's a lot now. Let's narrow that down. Yep. Let's go to the front. Uh, it's this way, right there. Let's go zigzag this time. That's good. Point four. That's good. Point five. That's good. Point six. Aha. Uh -huh. Culprit. Right here. Boom. Okay. Got it. All right. Let's see what the middle point looks now. Looks like now. Okay. Nothing there, but the rest will have to be taken care of by the leveling sensor. Let's go ahead and hit next step. In order to ensure the accuracy of the model, uh, the system will automatically level. All right. Uh, make sure there's no sundries on the nozzle. Fantastic. Let me see if I can have time to push this thing back some. All right. Let's see how it does. I am noticing that the bed is cold, which, uh, why would you ever level the bed with the bed cold? Oh, now we're doing Z offset. Okay, uh, offset Z, uh, press the Z zero key, okay, and then use, and then use the move up and down key on the right to adjust the height of the platform so that the leveling paper has slight friction between the nozzle and the platform, and then click the key below, okay. Uh, let's do this, let's move down. Down, 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 down. Aha, up, up. Here we go. Let's go a little bit less now. And then let's come down until we have some friction. All right, there we go. That should be good right there. Okay, let's hit next. Oh, save, let's hit save, saving. Since this is Clipper, technically this thing should reboot, and I think it did. I think everything turned off, which means it's gonna it's gonna save that Z offset to uh, to Clipper. Wow. Okay, and it turned on right back to where it was. So definitely custom Clipper interface here. Uh, next step. Oh, it's saving again anyway. Okay. Uh, hardened rails or soft wheels? Hardened rails everywhere. Uh, well, except for the Z. Old school leveling. <laughs> yeah, right. Shouldn't it say automatic tram? Um, I guess. But nothing nothing has been automatic so far. Uh, what's it doing now? Uh, collecting 121 compensation values. Please wait. So it's heating to bed to 60. Okay, so there you go. So, okay. So manual leveling was cold. And now it's going to heat up to 150 on the hot end, which is perfect and 60 on the bed um okay okay yeah i was jasper as you saw i was also disappointed but it looks like it's going to make a bed mesh with that hot uh so i'm guessing they're trying to keep it safe uh and technically getting it close enough with the wheels is is okay that's not that's not too bad i kind of thought the entire process was about to be cold uh but no it's it's heating So it's about to do 121 points.
Where was that one picture? <laughs> what? Holy. Well, I hope they have camp installed. <laughs> because if they try to do this bed mesh before prints, yo. I'm hoping they install some camp, some camp action. Uh, have you had any Mingda Magician series printers? I, Jake, I've had every single one. I just released the video uh, the other day on the Mingda Magician Pro 2. It's kind of rem reminiscent of a Creality Ender machine. Kind of looks like auto level is similar way. It bears it fast. It looks pretty stable. Uh, yes, except this is probably the closest to their new CR10 SE but larger than the CR-10 SE because the CR-10 SE is ender-sized. Uh, but Creality has, has been changing quite a bit uh, lately. Uh, for the better, if you ask me, but for the significantly better. Uh, and But this is this has its own take on things. Um, I don't know why they would go with this type of leveling or even doing this new, but it's something that you do one time or very rarely, and the rest of the time you kind of tweak as you go. As long as this thing has consistent first layer, I can't hate on any of it. Uh, so far, I'm cautious about that leveling sensor. Uh, but so far, I like a lot of it. I like a lot of it. Uh, does the paper fit into here? Oh, yeah. The paper fits. I know that's not important for everybody, for most folks, but having that paper right there is actually pretty clutch. I'm going to put the other one in there, too. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. I don't know if they, they thought about that or what, but that's nice. <clears throat> Imagine having to do that. Yeah, I, I really, really hope not. Yeah, yeah, camp. Camp is, is the, you know, this is Clipper. We're, we're installing camp if it's in there. If it's not in there, really. Also, it's not necessarily a negative thing, right? Uh, you know, most machines want to do a one bed leveling and then not bed level uh, so that it's faster to operate. Uh, in my opinion, it's better to do a small level around the area you need to print before every print. It just makes the prints reliable, uh, more reliable. So we'll see. Guys, while we're just sitting here waiting for this thing, uh, don't forget that there is a pinned comment at the top of the chat uh, where I give away a spool of PLA+. Plus from 3d max let's see how many people have entered only 46 people are in it so really good chances of you winning a spool of filament uh you know literally i get nothing out of it this is just from from me to you this is from 3d max them sending you a spool of a free pla plus so go ahead and enter uh i just love to be able to get the chance to do this kind of thing like it's it's really cool to me that if someone watches my stream this company is willing to send them a free spool of filament. Like that's amazing to me. So just fill that out. If you're in the U S if you're going to stick around 49 more minutes, at least, you know, give it a go. Also, uh, check out uh, shop at 3d print uh, If you guys are into uh, some cool merch that I've been working on, I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, they're 16 bucks. So very inexpensive. If you guys want to enter the speedboat race, uh, I made this awesome logo for the speedboat race. Um, see what else we got. Uh, this is something we've all seen. I bet if you're into 3d printing, um, the blob, the dreaded blob. So check that out as well. Uh, there's also hoodies. You can have some of my 3d printed spaghetti. Um, and we have some cool desk mats and mugs such as this. Cheers. Um, let's see, what are we, uh, we're doing? Okay, so we're at 0.14 already. Yeah, I, I kind of want to know, I'm guessing, I'm guessing these, um, those filament sensors, not filament sensors, I'm guessing those optical sensors are very inexpensive. That's why people use them, companies use them. Um, but man, I've just, I, I, like I said, I, I've never had a machine with one that does well. And every time I see it on a machine, I'm always a bit apprehensive. 
and like hope that this this one will change change my mind. Um, so we'll see. Crazy not to enter the free, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, is it heating up? Yes. No, it, it's doing it. It's it's doing its thing. Yes, I, I agree. Um, I started with the Ender 3. That was my first machine uh, with the original Ender 3. Uh, that, you know, comes in a box. You have to put it together completely. Not just like this, like a full kit where you're putting extrusions together. Um, and I just missed the A8 train. I wanted one of them, but it looked too complicated for me at the time. Now I, I would love one, but and I have one to build. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, then I got into it and that was, that was it. It was a life changer for me. What's an ABL? Automatic bed leveler. Uh, and the ABL here is this one. Uh, there was a photo of it. Well, it wasn't a photo of it. It was a part of an illustration for something else. But this guy, this specific sensor I'm very familiar with. And uh, I just I just haven't had good luck. So we'll see how this bed leveling does. I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, hope, I hope they kill it. Honestly, I hope they kill it. Uh, the new Chitty all ship with the optical sensor now. Yes, but it's not this optical sensor. It's a different optical sensor. I don't mind them. I, I've had a bunch like the Pinda, uh, all those type of, have been better, better than this one. This one, uh, it was used on, uh, what was that one machine? Um, Chad wanted that machine. It used to be right here somewhere. Uh, oh, my brain can't even think of the name. It was a bunch of letters and numbers by Hicktop. Uh, they use these sensors for um, for end stops and that would have been fine because the end stops don't have to be absolutely precise uh, but for leveling something about them I don't know uh, like I said hopefully I just had bad luck with it and they're fine the most recent machine with it is uh, the Elegoo Neptune 4 plus that I've dealt with and uh, yeah I, I, something about that first level I just never got it never got it working well I think a beacon, uh, I would beacon this if I could. Yeah, beacon would be good. Or that BD sensor would be good. And since this is running Clipper, technically it would be pretty easy to install. Uh, the other, the, well, it's not, it's not unfortunate, but this doesn't have a, this doesn't have a smart hot end. Like this is just a breakout board for this ribbon cable. So for a sensor like that, you would have to run a cable all the way back not really a problem he's running along this thing but it's not going to be as clean as something uh like being able to plug in a leveling sensor to a canvas board for example uh but beacon you can't run through canvas beacon has to be separate that's actually why i didn't put it on my trident even though i bought a beacon for 70 bucks um because you can't run it from the canvas tool head you'd have to run another wire and i'm trying to minimize all the wires but for something like this yeah you can do beacon or cartographer or bd sensor my first Ender 3 was Ender 3 Pro. Yep, Ender 3 Pro. Uh, wait, Fernando, you said you said you started like 11 years ago or something. Right, that was you? Oh, your first Ender. Sorry, your first Ender 3 was the Pro. My bad. I thought you meant like first 3D printer. Yeah, yeah, the Pro uh, fixed a couple of things uh, that the Ender didn't have. Um, but it wasn't until a later model that they really improved a lot. Like, I think the S1 was probably, like, the biggest improvement from the Enders. And then now the brand new ones are great because they have automatic Z, Z offset. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, what are you going to print on this machine? I'm hoping there's something on the SD card that we can print. Because I don't have any anything set up for it in any way. So usually what I do for these unboxings is, does the machine work? So we like to print from the SD card. And then later when I do a video, I usually print some models that are sliced. Um, uh, this runs Clipper natively, Luke. It runs Clipper and Fluid natively. So as soon as we can get this thing on Wi-Fi, after it does this, we'll have access to the front end 
and I'll go peek around what they have going on over there. Artillery take flat cable from the X and Y too? Um, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, they have their own. It's not a ribbon cable. It's like encased in rubber for the Y. But yeah. Camp should you find? <laughs> Cries in Da Vinci. Do you organize your women playlists by tra track alphabetically? It does it by itself. Uh, I think it organizes it by itself alphabetically, but I have it just on random, like it's on shuffle. So it just goes, you know, through the playlist. And uh, like I mentioned before, uh, Gavin, every time I do a video, like at a time, every time I edit a video, uh, I always try to find two or three more tracks on Upbeat, which I have a lifetime subscription to. Uh, so that I always add to this playlist about two or three songs every time I do a video. Uh, so that, it, I mean, it's still repetitive, but uh, there's hours of, of music at this point in there that's available to play on my live streams without getting me copyright strikes. So that, that's why I do it. It's because I have that lifetime subscription, my channel is whitelisted uh, for, for mus any music on Upbeat.io. Uh, so anytime I just, I download it and throw the MP3 into Winamp, uh, so that I have it for these live streams. Hello, is this a good printer to start with a plus size or go with a normal one? Uh, I can't say just yet. Uh, so far I like a lot about it. Um, I like a lot about it, uh, so far with this size. I like the mechanics of it. I like the build quality. I like the look of it. I like that it runs Clipper. I like that we have access, but until I print with it, I can't say yet. Uh, so far, it's been pretty easy. Uh, you can always uh, go back once the live stream's over, or even right now if you wanted to, like just track back in the live stream and see what it was like to put together. It's one of the reasons why I do this. If someone like had a question about something specific, you can see it like live and not something structured or put together by somebody that could have some bias. Like this is us doing it now, you know? Hey gamer, how you doing? A little chicken going on there with the... <laughs> nice little chicken. It does. It does. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this says auto leveling complete. So we're going to hit next step and it's going to do a save. So it's going to save our bed mesh to, to Clipper, which is nice. Is the Ender 3 V3KE a good printer? It's a great printer. Yeah, it's good. I like that one. I recommend it all the time. Uh, it's an interesting in between. And also, I did, uh, Gamer, if you have some time, I did a video recently on the channel. I think it's two videos ago. I compared the Ender 3 V3 SE, the Ender 3 V3 KE, and the Ender 3, or, and the CR10 SE. Very similar machines, uh, you know, within the price range. There's one on the low end, one on the high end, and one in the middle. Uh, the KE is right in the middle, um... I do think the, the, the CR10 SE is just a better machine just because of the way it's built. But because of the budget that this thing is in, the KE is in, it's pretty good. And it's fully automated. You don't have to do anything that we just did, for example. <laughs> Elite. Yes, I agree, man. I'll watch other stream. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, load consumables into feed hole and observe whether... <laughs> <laughs> Dang, at, at least wine and dine me first. <laughs> oh my god. Um, dang, boy. <laughs> Gotta get them consumables in the feed hole right away. Uh, let's find some fun consumables to place in said feed hole. Uh, you know what? We're gonna not go easy on it like we have with every other machine. Let's do uh, let's do a silk filament, uh, just because it is slightly more challenging uh, than normal. Let's do it that way. Oh, where'd that piece go? I'll be sure to step on that later. All right, let's do this rainbow silk. All right, through the sensor. 
Uh, load consumables into feed hole. All right, let's let's load them consumables. Uh, feed hole, and observe whether the tailings are extruded. If not, please click load and check. All right, we're gonna hit load. There it goes. It took those consumables. <laughs> Red Hot Cheetos and feed hole. <laughs> Consumables are your sundries. <laughs> uh, that's another t-shirt. I'm telling you, man, every single time we do a live stream, there's at least one or two, uh, one or two shirts that come out of it. The, the first one was the spaghetti. The spaghetti was one of my favorites. I still, I still chuckle occasionally when I remember the moment. I don't remember the dude's name. It was leaving and he said, okay, I'm out of here. I've eaten too much spaghetti, and it blew my mind. What a way to exit. Yeah, we got sundries. And we got beef beetle. <laughs> Creality needs to do better on the naming. I think everyone at Creality knows this. I think they found out with this launch about their own naming. There we go. We got sundries coming out of the, the feed hole now. All right. So we did have some white filament in there, so that's good. I like Fluid, how it links the detailed docs from the CFG. Wonder if it has been neutered on this. Yeah, we're going to find out uh, as soon as I get this thing on Wi-Fi. Surprising, surprisingly, this is doing everything offline right now. Usually, they want you to get on there as soon as possible. So, so far, so good. Uh, you know what? This is a universal thing, Zumi. How many have I unboxed that you watch that have had funky, uh, you know, things like this? I don't know why they don't just get anybody that's actually in the language that they're translating to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I, I think it's zero. I think it's just Google did it. Are they still doing the V3 proper? I don't know. I'm going to unbox one on the 19th. I was technically... So... As far as the, the, the Ender goes, uh, the Ender 3v3, I was supposed to do a full video on it, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do an unboxing live with you guys when it's launched. Uh, I find that to be more fun, and then I'll do it. Um, I don't like to do a video upon release because everyone's going to do that. It's going to get lost in translation anyway. I'd rather do it live. You guys can watch. If you guys want to watch like a video, everyone's going to do that, and uh, it'll be slightly more tailored. And I'll stick to the to the let's hang out situation. Linus the bastard cat. That's a good good name. Now I need another printer, uh, but this section looks half decent for Bitslinger. Yeah, I don't know how much. Um, I, I don't know how much Linus. Uh, this this machine's gonna be released on the twentieth, uh, so I don't know. So feed the printer, watch it poop. Got it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Another shirt. <laughs> I do it live. That's true. That's actually, that's actually, we've gotten like three shirts out of the stream. I dig it. Sundries. <laughs> ah, that's hot. All right, next step. Please insert memory card or U disk. All right, cool. We got that. I wonder if this is set up in Clipper in the same way where the memory is actually really limited on the machine, and this is the way that they do the file management. Shady Tech does it this way, a couple other ones do it that way. Oh, that LED has color. Uh, that LED is red now. So I'm guessing it has LED effects from Clipper, and it's uh, using the uh, heated... Oh, it's doing a nozzle cleaning. Cool, you guys seeing this? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it just did a full nozzle cleaning. Okay. Please insert memory card. Yep, did it. Finish. Hey, look at that. Okay, we have a new screen to look at. Another oh, reflection is going to be tricky. I do got to say, I like the, the look of the material design that they're using. The icons are not confusing. Like, this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm assuming that's not clickable. Okay, this is kind of funny. I know a lot of manufacturers are doing this. They're all putting... Also, this says plus? Okay, yeah. Uh, they're all putting... The front screen of their machine has the name of the machine. But we already know the machine. So this could have been better used. But 
Uh, so far, so good. Let's heat the bed to 60. Let's see how this works. 60. I like that they're not shoving Wi-Fi into my face. I like that. Lights. Oh, super bright. Those lights are very, very bright. Uh, fan. Let's keep this at 150 so that it heats up faster when we're ready. All right, let's go to uh, tool. Okay, so we got language. We got Dutch, Chinese, and English. We're fine in English. Let's see what serve means. With regard to sale. Okay, so just saying their, their stuff. Restart. Should I click it? Systems normal. Okay. About. Power on guide. There's no update currently. Right, because it's not on Wi-Fi. Uh, let's go to settings. So we got just typical movement. Uh, loading and unloading a filament. Yep. That's nice. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, you guys can't really see this. Hold on. My bad, guys. My bad. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I can fix this. I can fix this. Let's go to image. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. All right. My bad. I'll go back. I want you guys to see this. So home. Typical stuff. Heating. Very cool. Lights. 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 <laughs> Lights no longer works. Are we frozen? That's weird. Well, it worked a second ago, so that's fun. All right, let's keep going, I guess. Tool. We got language. I don't know what serve means. Restart says the system's fine. Here's some about information. We go to settings. We got typical movement stuff. We got load and unload. Refueling. Sometimes you just got to refuel. When, uh, when you put filament, when you put sundries into the feed hole, you got to click that. Unload feed. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, which is nice. So we got 100 mil. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, cal, I'm guessing calibration. Auto leveling. Oh, resonance compensation. We got to do that. Let's do it. Uh, X compensation, Y compensation. That's cool. So a lot of bed slingers that are running Clipper do not have Y compensation. They're not, they don't have a sensor in the bed. Uh, so interesting to see this. I'm going to do it. Can I not click this? Can I not click any of it? Oh, that's a button. Okay. So apparently maybe I'm clicking too much. Maybe I like got big fingers or something. Nothing. X axis resonance conversation activated question mark. I don't know. Can I click anything? No. Okay, cool. It looks good. Well, it looks like <laughs> looks like it could use an update. Um, oh, now things are glowing. Okay, so I think I might have just clicked too much and maybe maybe found some kind of bug in this thing. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna reset I'm gonna reset it. I'm gonna reset it and start fresh. The things that we needed to save are saved, so let's do that. On any of these clipper machines, you definitely got to give it some time, by the way. Like a good uh, good few seconds to do its thing. <laughs> With VTech. Too much bezel on that controller? Yeah, there is quite a bit of bezel in it. But does it catch fire? I don't know. We're going to find out. <laughs> yes, yes. RC cars, you have to chase behind. Uh, do you think Creality Multicolor Printing is coming soon? Yes. They have never said it out loud uh, to me, but I have a feeling they will because they ever all these companies have to compete uh, with AMS. They just do. So no matter what they're telling me, I don't believe them. I think all of them are developing something. Yeah, these screens all suck. Yeah. I've been telling companies the entire time uh, that we all want raw clipper screen. We don't want this. All right, let's try this again. Uh, we're going to go 60 on the bed. 150 on the hot end. I know we're just doing resonance, but I like these things to be hot. We're going to settings. We're going to go to calibration. 
resonance. Let's do Y. I'm mostly interested in Y. Do you start Y resonance compensation? I do start. Resonance compensation in progress. Please wait. This is cool. This is cool. Um, I can dig this. Like I said, I know firsthand uh, from all of the clipper machines that I think I have that are bed slingers. I don't think any of them have a Y sensor in them. So this is cool. Even, even though they do a Y compensation, they don't actually apply anything. So, yeah, input shaping, yeah. Yeah, the Neptune 4, the file selector, I mentioned it in the video because I just reviewed that machine. Uh, yeah, you can't you can't use the files if you're using Clipper or using or uh, Orca Slicer to drop files in the Clipper. It just doesn't work, uh, which is weird. Like I often reprint files that I'm working on, and you can't on that machine. It's weird. <laughs> Frozen's coming out with AMS, but they haven't come out. So yeah, right. Yeah, they're the ones, they're, they're actually showing it. I don't think anyone else is really showing it. Yeah, if there's an ADXL on this thing, that's on the Y, that's fantastic. MCU shutdown. Timer too close. This often indicates the host computer is overloaded. Check for other processes com com consuming access CPU usage. Okay, I am going to start the same thing and do it without heating. I wonder if there is some bug uh that involves the heaters overloading the system that would also explain why it was running so slowly to the point of uh, uh freezing when i was trying to do this previously with with the screen so let's see so right now nothing is being heated uh let's do it without whoops let's do that without that it's gonna home real quick because i pressed the wrong button <laughs> All downhill since endgame. Stream over, he broke it. Did I break it? Maybe. Alright, let's see. These are all real experiences, though. Like, you know what I mean? Alright, resonance, compensation. So now nothing is heated. Nothing can be overloading it. Let's hit Y. Also, go to find out that it needs, like, an external sensor. That would be hilarious. Like, why have it here and actually do it? You know what I mean? That could be a thing as well. Like the KE, for example, they want you to put on a different sensor. Here we go. Invalid. ADXL ID. Uh, got FF verse E5. I don't know what that means. Okay, I have a feeling this doesn't have uh, an ADXL in the Y. It, the compensation is available to do if you plug in a sensor. Uh, let's try X and see if it does X, and that would explain it to us. Another way to know is to obviously get to the fluid front end. We'd know right away from there, too, so I'll do that next. Uh, what time we got? 11.35? Oh, man. Uh, so this is under 30 minutes to get into the giveaway for the filament. So you guys check out that link in the very top of the chat. It's pinned. Uh, if you guys are going to stick around till around 12 or a little bit past 12. Uh, invalid. Okay, so I think this thing doesn't have an ADXL. Uh, and it needs an external one, which would explain all of this. Which would kind of mean we wasted our time, and I did it wrong. It would me—it would be my fault for me not reading anything, obviously. So, be sure to be sure to consider that. All right, calibration. Uh, let's see. Is there? Uh, equipment interface, manual leveling. Nothing for resonance compensation in here. I see the button, but they don't go into it. Printing for the first time. 
Oh, they have an artillery slicer, looks like. Uh, okay, okay, okay. This is how to get into fluid, how to put the sensor, I mean, uh, filament in, how to clean the bed. Okay, so there is, okay, there's nothing in here about having an ADXL. So therefore, I just went into it because it's available in the front end. However, this is for an external sensor. Uh, and we do not have one. In fact, uh, here's further proving that it's my fault. The photo has a sensor plugged into the USB-C and plugged right there. And here it has a sensor plugged in to the front onto the side. So my fault <laughs> for not knowing that. I just was kind of digging around, uh, clicking through everything and exploring on my end. So that's on me. That's on me, everybody. Let me go back to home. Uh, let's heat this thing. So my bad on the delay. I guess that kind of delayed us a bit, huh? Like 20 minutes into being able to print. I'm gonna hit net. I'm gonna add in my network uh, so that we can get into the front end of this thing. So let's see how easy that is to do. Tiny, tiny, tiny text. Like, that's too small. I can't even hit it. Well, we are, we are once again frozen. So that's fun. Sundry's error. <laughs> I think the ADXL is in the screen. You got a duct tape uh, done on the, <laughs> nice. Get some glasses. Nah, we, uh, we have, uh, we have frozen again. Uh, this thing needs to get online. This thing needs to get online because we need to check to see if there is an update. It's not a good sign. It's not the best sign ever, no. Is it sad that these type of things don't, like, scare me or surprise me? Uh, like, working on machines is so normal to me. I constantly work on machines daily. Uh... This type of stuff, it's just, it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but I get it. I get how this would be a huge red flag to people. It's also a machine that's not even out yet. Uh, it's not even out for pre-order yet. This is a early look for me uh, that I chose to do a live unboxing instead of doing a video on. Uh, or in addition to doing a video on, I guess. So you guys got to keep that in mind. Did you level the bed? <laughs> Did you level the bed is also a shirt. Maybe it's a Hodo problem. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes, that's true. All right. So let's try this again. Settings. Network. Click tiny text. Click wrong button. Click back. Click tiny text again. Click here. Okay. Click. Oh man, this the tiny, tiny text. My finger can press probably four letters at one time. Wi Fi connecting. All right, let's see the Wi Fi connecting. It's going to be 192.168.1. One. Wi Fi connection success. What's our IP? 31. All right, right into fluid. So that's, that's great. That's a great, great sign. And now I can avoid the entire screen. Uh, is there anything else on the screen that we need? There's the print button. Uh, let's see, is there anything on here? Slicer, model file, hollow box PLA. Uh, so this doesn't scroll on the screen, so I can't see the actual times for these files, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, spade, plum blossom, boat, PLA plus. So if we hit that, does it show us more information? Let's see. Okay, it does. Uh, nothing on the duration or material, but it does say PLA plus up there. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go home. Uh, let's, uh, you know what? Like I said, I'm not going to use the screen. Okay, here's another reason not to use the screen. Let's use Clipper. I'm very familiar with Clipper. Let's go in there. Let's get, uh, well, let me get the camera right. Let's go like this. Uh, one thing I do want is the lights. All right, let's do this. We're going to do 60, 150. And let's have that heat up. While that's heating, let's take a quick look around. Let's see the macros. Okay, just the basics. Nothing in here at all that's custom. There is a nozzle wipe, nozzle clean. That's nice. Part fan, okay. Uh, let's go ahead into the bed. Whoa, yeah. Uh, 0.7, okay. 0.7, I mean, this looks wild, but it's a 0.7 variance. It's under one, that's okay. Over one would be a concern. Under one's not bad. Plus it's manual, which means you can always tweak that. Uh, that's not that bad, I'm not angry at it. Uh, lots of uh, saves in here, holy. So this means that these are all temporary files. The fact that they kind of lock this out of removing these is a bit annoying. These are, that means that they're always gonna be there. Uh, until there's an update or something like that. Uh, it, it, okay, so it runs you know all MKS has MK uh, MKS THR on there. Okay, let's see the config. Let's see how neat it is in here. Okay, save home it uses. Verify heater extruder. Is there any macros in here? Homing and gantry routines. Okay, a lot of commented out stuff. Mode lights. Macro for the nozzle wipe. Okay, that's good. Print end, print start. Very basic. Save variable, clear. Okay. Save last file. All right. So pretty basic stuff. Uh, so it doesn't do any kind of special print start stuff. It just kind of does, does the basics which is not necessarily bad. Yeah, some NeoPixel stuff. Yeah, here's the, yeah, cool. So it, 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 that little light actually does have an effect. Okay, these are the points. Yeah, the custom moves on the screen, they're done through macros. So those buttons are just literally, you're just clicking the macros to move the bed around. This is good. All right, here, this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see their config. So. They PID tuned it out of the out, out of the factory here. We did a Z offset, so that's our Z offset. This is the mesh that we set. Holy moly, that's a million points. Uh, tension, I guess that's for the bed. And it has an input shaper in here, uh, which is good. But it's not something that we can do. I mean, we'd have to buy a USB-C uh, shaper. I, have, I do have a USB, a USB one, but... Um, that we can plug in later, but I'm not going to mess with it for today. So yeah, not bad. There's nothing tricky in here and it's totally alterable in some way, shape or form. Since it uses MKS, I'm assuming we can get into the uh, SSH. Uh, do you guys remember the the command for MKS? Um, let's see if I can remember it. It's not pi. I think it's MKS, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Anyone in the chat remember SSH MKS board? Because if we can SSH, that would be great. It's maker base, right? Uh, login is MKS. And then it's uh, maker base. All right, let's see. Let's see if they left it for us. Okay, so far so good. Maker base. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, huge praise for that. Um, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, brain, brain, do the thinking with the stuff in it, with the words uh, that I want. Um, Installer.sh, uh, Kia, Kia.
he... Uh, I want to see... Uh, I want to see if we indeed have uh, full-on root access to everything. And this is going to be cool. I, I, so far, guys, uh, honestly, the little stuff that was happening with the screen, that's that's something for them to do an update on. Whoops. Maker base. That's something that they could fix with an update themselves. I'm not interested in that. I, uh, I'm way more interested in Clipper, being able to install Camp, uh, being able to make my own macros. That's something I'm significantly more interested in than uh, their screen. You know, obviously, if you're new to the whole thing and you don't want to do this type of thing, yeah, that's completely different. <laughs> Linus, thank you so much for helping, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Log in his social security number. <laughs> nice, Joseph. Almost, almost had him. Almost had him. So yeah, since this is running MKS, I bet you this thing is running uh, an MKS board in it as well, uh, which needs an update to stop all these little quirkiness uh, things that are happening. LS to see the directory. I don't know if I helped. You did in the corner, my. Sometimes I need to just talk it out for my brain to function properly. The Adel destination already exists and it's not empty. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can still run it, though. Boom. Perfect. So there we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see what what versions they're running on everything. I'm not going to update this uh, because I'd want them to do it. I, usually, updating things like this on machines that have custom firmware, custom Clipper versions will break it. So I just want to see. Uh, I just want to see how far behind it is. I guess it is running fairly slow. All right, so we're two versions behind. That's not so bad. One version of Moonraker. Uh, quite old on Fluid, but that's okay. Oh, no, no, oh, no. That, yeah, that, that's quite old on Fluid. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, but this just means that we can install everything. We have SSH access, so uh, that's, that's great. I'm very happy about that. Um, cool. Yeah, that's nice. And as you see, things are easy to manage and install. All that stuff's cool. Uh, nothing crazy. All right, so we're heated up. Uh, let's go check out that Benchy in here. Uh, model file boats. Did they give us access? No, they didn't. I hate when they hide the little button that makes these larger. I want to see these bigger, right? Uh, okay, so do they, do they have tines? No, they don't. Hollow box, PLA, boat, spade. I don't know what that means. All right, we're just going to do the boat. Uh, let's print. We have PLA in there. Let's see how it handles this. I love the, the LED. The little LED color thing is cool. I think the Ming that does this too, but I, I think it's a nice touch. Uh, also, here is the screen now. So we have changed over to a different screen. Uh... We have temperatures, we have Z offset, we have rates, speed, everything. So good to go. Good to go so far. Guys, it looks like I'm going to go a little bit over. There's about 10 minutes left in the giveaway, uh, but I want I want to see this bed through. Is it going to clean? Yeah, it's going to clean the nozzle, which is nice. Every single time I tried to watch it, get pulled off something else. It happens. Uh, that could go a little bit lower. I might be too late on it, though. Let's go down. Just a couple clicks. Maybe one more click. Yeah, that's good. I'll do one more for good luck. Cool. 
Yeah, that's looking good for the first layer. I'll get you guys closer in there in a second. Uh, let's see, how can I do that a little better? Let's do it this way. Keep in mind, guys, I am throwing a lot at it at the moment. Like, we put in silk filament. <laughs> uh, it should be, you know, they, they want you to use the hyper, hyper stuff, but come on. Try to find a view that works a little better. It's about as low as I can go on the camera, camera setup there. She is fast. She is fast. My Neptune came with a broken speed benchy that would knock itself off at the roof every time. I thought it was uh, appropriate because I hate printing benchy all the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> How do you like the lamp and breeze? There is a breeze. Uh, there is a breeze. That fan is, is crazy on the bottom there. Excuse me. Uh, the lamp's cool. The lights are cool. I like the lights. Why don't you update these types of printers? If you update their, their version of Clipper, it's going to break. Uh, it's going to break the entire thing. And you'll have to reflash uh, the actual e EMC unit, which you can't do if they don't give you an adapter, which they don't give you an adapter. So you don't want to update Clipper because it's their version of said Clipper. Uh, the one thing that's cool is it has um, it has SSH access. So you're still still able to do whatever it is that you want. Uh, but I would be extremely cautious uh, to update Clipper um, without them on this type of thing. Now, if you want to go for it and install your own you know, your own base MKS thing, you're going to probably lose the screen. Um, you can, there's nothing stopping you, but be ready. Be ready to run into issues if you update it yourself. Uh, that was a thing that Chitty Tech learned the hard way. Uh, when they released their first machine, it was kind of unlocked in a way where you could hit update on Clipper and it would update and it would brick your machine because it's not meant to run in a universal configuration. It's meant to run in a really specific configuration for the hardware. So it's like, I don't know, what's a good example? Because you can get a Windows machine and then hit update on Windows. Because it's like drivers and stuff. There's no drivers here. Um, what would be a good example? I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But don't update. If it works, don't update it. So just as a thing about Clipper, just as like a rule of thumb... Um, also, there's five minutes in our giveaway, guys. If you guys want a chance to win a spool of filament, there's a there's a Gleam.io link pinned to the top of the chat. Go ahead and jump in there. This thing is killing my table. Look at my camera. It's... Holy crap. Um... Yeah, that's some violent shaking. Because it's, it's a huge print bed. My laptop is going to fall off its stand. My goodness. Um... I mean, it's printing very fast. I don't see any cooling issues either. The bed movements are violent. How loud is it? Um, here, I'm going to pause the music. It's not that loud. Uh, I'll go to my mic. Uh, let's go filters. Noise suppression. Trash. There we go. You guys should be hearing the full, full audio. So I'm directly next to it. I mean, you're not going to be this close unless you're trying to inhale plastic. But that's the cooling fan, the 5015 fan. That's the huge motherboard fan on the bottom. It's not bad. This is probably two times quieter than the K1, three times. Uh, it's a little bit louder than the Delta. Uh, the Delta is uh, pretty good, but I mean, it's printing fast, it's cooling, it's printing with silk, which is kind of funny. Not too bad. 
It does say that this is going to be a 25-minute Benchy, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem that way. It's already at 20%, so I think this time is just broken. All right, I'm going to turn, uh, turn the sound back on. Let's do, where'd it go? Noise, suppression, apply, close, and music. All right, we should be back. All right, just so you're aware, that will not save the Z offset when the print is done. So your next print will need to be adjusted again. Uh, let's see how they do it. Uh, you are correct, sir. And the reason is just like any of these machines that run their own clipper, uh, it goes here. So what you would want to do is after this print is done, there's going to be a save button that appears right here. There it is, this guy. This button will be visible. Uh, so after the print is done, if you do not click this, that Z offset will not save. That's correct. So that's something, that's a clipper thing. Um, and basically what this is doing, this is as if you're moving this. Now, the, the real test is going to be when you do hit the save button and the, the, the clipper you know, shuts down and reboots, when clipper comes back up, you want to see this back at zero. And the reason for that is because in here, whoops, in here, it needs to append that to this, it needs to add that negative 30 to here. So this should actually say 450. If it does not say 450 after this print is done and we click that and this says negative 30, that means it does that horrible adding double Z offset thing, which I hate about a bunch of machines and they make me avoid the screen altogether. Uh, so far, just based on the little quirks that I've had with the screen, I personally already wouldn't be using this. This is one of those machines where I'd boot it, I'd go to my computer, I would add in the IP into the slicer, which in my case would be Orca, and then that's how I would use the machine. I would use everything through here and not the screen. I do that with a bunch of different machines, um, but that, that's just me. But yeah, so yeah, after this, after this thing is printed, you want to hit the save button here. The other way to do it is if you literally type in save config and then hit enter when it's done. You don't want to do that now when it's done, that's another way to do it. If it has a USB port, I'll try to put my Logitech receiver and try my mouse. <laughs> yes. Any special requirements? Uh, silk doesn't like to go fast. It has an additive in it that makes it silky and that kind of makes it harder to print fast because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you just hit extrude, like when the print head is in the air, on a regular uh, PLA, it just comes out like a string. Whereas silk kind of like almost not like bubbles up into a, a huge thick stream. And that's because of the additives that are in it. Reinstall Linux. <laughs> Shakes like the KE, true. Lots of bed to throw, yes. Fred, did you see my comment about the Z offset? I did now. Sorry, I, I'm behind on the chat. The real test is a save button. <laughs> yes. What kind of ABS do you recommend? I'm pretty biased. Uh, I use a lot of ABS all the time. And I, I really like uh, 3D Max's ABS. It's simple, it works. Uh, their, their, their brand new um, um, carbon stuff is awesome. That's my new, my new favorite filament at the moment. I have a bunch of carbon, for, but for some reason that one specifically just it, it hides everything so well. I'm, print, I'm making an entire printer build from that stuff. Well, ASA, but it's close enough. One of the comments I made on the X, uh, X4 Plus video is that the screen is not good. Yeah, the screen, the screen is better than some of the other ones. I like this better than the Neptune, but does yours freeze up like that, Jerry? What are some starter printers? How starter? If it's your first machine, I would say Ender 3 V3 SE is fantastic. If it's not your first machine, tell me more. Tell me what you want to print. Uh, do you like, do you need special materials? Do you have requirements for space? Otherwise, I think that machine for the price, I don't know if there's anything close at the moment because of it's just how automatic everything is and it has an upgrade path. What's your favorite brand of PLA? 3D Max. That's easy. Uh, but this is a prototype. Make sure you mention that to them. 
Right. Yes. Well, I don't think this is a prototype. I think this is pretty market ready. But it's a prototype as in the machine isn't released yet. So it's that. Can this do TPU? Uh, I see FPV in your name. Um, actually, since FPV is in your name, I wanted to play this earlier. Uh, I built a, a Holo Donata. Holo, Holo Donata with the O3 air unit. This was my first flight. I'll show you in a second. Um, yes, this should be able to print TPU, uh, short path between the direct drive. This should be able to do TPU, especially if you slow it down. Do not print TPU fast. If you're into FPV, you should probably know that already. Uh, but yeah, check this out. It's just a couple seconds. Uh, I took it to work for lunch and uh, found this cool spot. There was no one around, uh, luckily. So I was just cruising. Uh, yeah, first, uh, first battery pack uh, through the drone after building it. But this thing is tiny. If you guys know the Hollow Donata, uh, you know, fits in the palm of your hand. Uses an O3 air unit, uh, ELRS, uh, fun stuff. But definitely super fun to fly. And then this place is just unbelievable. Uh, I don't want to stay too long there's people working, but no one was outside. Uh, and I was just sitting on a little park bench down there by the water, uh, right by my office. It's fantastic. I think it cuts off here, but yeah, super cool little flight, um, fun little drone. Sound went out. Can you still hear me, Walkman? My screen hasn't frozen, uh, but it has too many translation errors and many navigation is not good. I agree about the translation errors. Also guys, it is past 12, so the giveaway has been over. Uh, let's see how many of you guys entered 62 people. Okay. That's pretty good. I will draw a winner. I mean, we're 60% of the way in, uh, you guys planning on sticking around everyone planning on stick around for a little while until this is done. Um, cause usually when I do the drawing, everyone leaves and, uh, I would like to see this machine through its first print. Uh, Mr. Walkman, everyone else seems to be listening fine. Yes, Zach. Yes, it is. What's a good second printer off of Oxlab Aquila that's a little more up to date and advanced? Um, the Adventure 5M is pretty good. Uh, if you're if you're still talking Betslinger because you just want to stay relevant to what you know, uh, the CR10 SE is awesome. Uh, if you want just a little bit of a bump but similar spec, kinda but have the openness of, of uh, uh, what's it called, Clipper. The Ender 3 V3 KE is pretty good. Uh, all those are somewhat in that price range. The, the, the CR10 SE is going to be in, uh, higher. Not to be that guy with the giveaway. Yeah, yeah, it's over. Hey, I know FPV too. Nice. Cool, cool. Uh, yes, the, GI, the, the uh, V2. Holy motion sickness. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do, uh, I fly drones, not necessarily for a living, but uh, it's a part of the services that we provide as drone services. So I'm a, I'm a licensed pilot, so I fly very often. And uh, I have a flight log that I try to maintain, so I fly as much as I possibly can. Same spot as Bot Grinder, Cricket. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't know Bot went there before, but I saw Cricket fly there. Uh, yeah, my office is next door. <laughs> so when I saw the video, I was like, dude, I go there for walks all the time. Uh, but I've never flown there. <laughs> yeah, obviously, there's significantly better pilots than me. Um, I've only gotten into freestyle flying for, what, like a, a year and a half or so? Uh, maybe two years now, I guess. But I really love building drones. Like I, I, I think I build them more than I fly them at this point. Uh, but most of the, most of the flying that I do for a living is cinematic stuff for, you know, I do web design and, and, um, uh, advertising web, adver website advertising essentially. And, uh, anytime that I work with those type of, uh, with, with clients that require drones, it's always cinematic. It's never like, you know, it's never FPV style stuff. Although I did fly, uh, the Avada 
over water with some boats and that was incredible like the Avada really really made so much sense because at any given moment i flip a switch and it hovers uh you can you feel safe flying over water uh significantly over a built drone and the battery life 20 minutes are you kidding me that you can't touch that with anything of that size so a lot of dji stuff i'm here till the end i like that jason thank you i'm a bit tired <laughs> come on kick i i work too man i'm never here i'm a bot nice flight bro i appreciate that thank you do the real giveaway after the ollie <laughs> yeah fpv is super super fun Uh, I'm still catching up, guys. You know, but then three, thanks. Always send it, yep. Building's the way to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and uh, the most recent 5-inch drones and some of the other smaller quads that I've really, really enjoyed. Like, my fav I think my favorite quad is the original Odinata um, by uh, Crafted Quads. Just because it's so tiny, it's completely silent. It feels like a significantly larger drone in the goggle, and it's just minuscule. And I can bring it to, wa uh, to work and fly anywhere without, you know, uh, getting into trouble, so to say. Like, I've flown my 5-inch there, and I had the security come, come out and stuff, which I don't want that. I'm, I'm an adult, like, getting, you know what I mean? Like, maybe if I go to a band or something cool, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I've been getting into smaller quads lately. So this Hollow Donata is awesome. It's 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 the perfect size for me. I just wish I got a little bit more than three minutes out of it. What's a good way to start on building drones? You're not gonna like this answer, but just to build one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super fun. If you like to solder, or if you like the challenge of soldering, building is so much fun. It's like one of the most rewarding things because you get to fly it. Like you actually get to use it. It's almost like building a Voron and then being able to like print with it. Finally, it's really similar. You like build it, program it, but then fly it. It's freaking cool. Avada, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the best part. That's really the best part. Also, I've had my seven-year-old fly it. I've had my my seventy well, my 73-year-old father fly it first time ever. He got motion sick on it, but it's just an incredible thing. Whatever the hate it gets is just stupid. Just stop. Uh, I love that thing. I think it's phenomenal. And it's great for work. Proto 25. I, I yeah yeah I, I've seen it. I, I built the hollow. So before when I when I bought an O3 to to start with, I checked so many out, and uh, the the hollow did not. You know Kai from Craft the Quads. I I chat with him all the time. He he's a cool dude, and I've just been a fan of his quads. I have like three or four of his quads. Uh, so it was a no brainer for me because I like I like just like the style of that. You know it's kind of like a small five inch if that makes sense. Yeah, Beta Flight, <laughs> Beta Flight. Yep. I I'm the same way, man. I just you just gotta get in there. You gotta get them hands dirty. Uh, I started with analog. I still fly analog. Um, I have this box goggle, the 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 Scout by Fat Shark, and man, I don't know what it is, but they look great. You know, I have I have the uh, the what's it called the um, DJI uh, goggles too. And yeah, they're super HD, but something about putting on the analog goggle with a decent analog system, it, there's nothing like it. It feels so good. So I'm definitely going to keep a couple analog drones around. We all get motion sickness. <laughs> all right, this thing's almost done. Uh, so we'll do the giveaway as soon as I pop this thing off, guys, okay? It's a 98. It's been 20 minutes, so it's going to be about a 21-minute bench here or so. Which is not bad. It's looking good for a silk benchy this fast. And for a 300 by 300 bed slinger. There it is. Oh, that top is ruined. That top is bad. Alright, I'll let it cool down a bit. So while that is done, let's do the giveaway. They definitely used uh, a different profile for that pre-sliced. Oh, did they? Yeah, I mean, this that, that top is horrible. Uh... <coughs> How about them apples? Look at that. 
Wait, wait. Let's get that gimbal moving. There we go. All right, let's do the giveaway. Uh, this is Creality Silk Filament. So definitely a challenge. If this was regular filament, I bet it would do better. But that's beside the point. Uh, you know, why not challenge the thing? All right, let's go to... Can I edit this? Why am I on this screen? Okay, here we go. Gleam. Uh, what is going on? Uh, competition. Oh, it took me to a different screen. Okay, here we go. Ended. Let's click this one. Winners. Let's draw a winner. One winner. Allow repeats. Draw. All right. Are you in the United States? Yes. You did not answer the question. So we are picking a new winner. Repick. Are you in the United States? Yes. Did you answer the question? Yes. Uh, announce widgets, avatar, announce. Boom, congratulations to John F. John F, are you in the chat? Software during my past life, out of tech now. I program my controllers, 3D printing. Nice. That's good stuff. John F, you in here, buddy? John with two N's. John. You in here, John? So just like I always do, uh, guys, if John is not in here in the next uh, few here, we're going to give him five minutes uh, to claim the prize. So it's 1213. So we are going to do, uh, what is it, 18? 1218, we'll, uh, we'll repick. <laughs> John, no, 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 no. Can't that him? Oh, so that means he's not here. All right. Uh, I will do exactly as I normally do, uh, and I will give him five minutes. Uh, so at 12.18, we will repick. Uh, Johnny. <laughs> Maybe it's a stupid question, but how do I know if I answered the question about being in the U.S.? Uh, it, it's based on your location of uh, the Gleam that I owe knows your location. So it'll be in the, in, you know, it'll tell me based on your email. Maybe John is in the John. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I didn't see on the forum where it asked the question. Uh, I'm so you know what? I'm surprised that it's not required. Like it's the only thing on there. So maybe I have to check my setup there, but it should be required. Corn Snoop, cool name. I don't recall if I saw that question. There's only one question on there. This question was uh it was how many printers do you own? So you just have to pop in a number in there. What was the first person that got it? I don't know. I actually didn't even look at the name. I went like backwards. I looked at, is the location in the United States? Yes, I went over. It was missing an answer. So I just, I left it. The question was required because in the past, in the past few uh, uh, of these giveaways, uh, the first person that I've picked has been, uh, you know, didn't put the question in. So, uh, John, are you in here, buddy? You have a few more minutes left. Three more minutes uh, before we choose somebody else. Uh, while we're waiting for our boy, John F., let's take a closer look at this thing. Oh, okay, that's not, that's not ready to come off of there. Uh, Z offset have been modified. Oh, check this out, Jerry. Whoa, this thing's so zoomed in. Jerry, this is new. A Z also has been modified. Do you want to save the parameters? Okay, so this is going to be a perfect test while we wait for our friend. Uh, I'm going to hit... Oh, we need this screen. Wait. We need this screen. Let me get this thing back. Uh, here's what we're looking for. Right here. So you see this? This says negative 30. And this check mark, I want to see how this thing saves. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to save. And then let's see how it does it. I'm hoping that this says zero. That said zero, that this is the best way to do it. This means the screen does not double. So this already is an improvement over the Elegoo machine. 
Uh, let me go to the configuration. See, this is up at the top. That means that it not only saved the variables, but also the, the config. So this is done correctly. Like this is the good way to do it in Clipper. And let's see on the bottom. Yep, 450. So this did it properly. This did it the way the Clipper intended to do it and not how a bunch of manufacturers for some reason do it here. Like this is the live, I just adjusted it. Here's how far I adjusted it. And when you hit save, you want it to go in the configuration and permanently add that in. So yeah, it did it, it, did it correctly. That's, that's proper. We got one more minute. Uh, John, uh, let me go back to the screen. John F, are you in here, sir? And if you are, you have won yourself a spool of filament and you have one minute to claim it. Uh, do you have the firmware version? I can tell you, uh, set, uh, there's an about tool maybe? Yeah, tool about, I have version uh, 1.2.16. And it says no update. 1.2.16. <laughs> nice, Joseph. <laughs> All right, so, okay, we're at 218. Here's last call. Hey, John, are you in here, buddy? John with two N's and an F. Uh, you have won yourself a spool of filament, and if you're not here, sorry, my friend. Basically creating an eBay account so you can do something with that nice filament. <laughs> Larry. I like you, Larry. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, all right, we're picking a new person. Uh, let's go. Let's do unannounced winners. Click winner, repick winner, repick. There we go. You are in the United States. You have answered how many uh, printers you have. You have two printers. I'm going to announce winners. I'm going to hit... Announce with avatar, announce, and the new winner is Chris M. Look at that, we get a little avatar in there. Chris M, are you in here? Congratulations, you have won yourself a spool. Did it flush out all those temp configs? I actually don't think so. They were all in there. No, it didn't. That's it's only going to flush those out if they do a install of a new uh, OS. Uh, Chris Sam, are you in here? Let's check the chat. I like when you say their answer. Yeah, I, I, I need to get better at that because um, that information is actually pretty fun. Like I don't use it for anything, but it's just fun to look through. Chris, where are you at? <coughs> Are we gonna have another another five minute? I guess we should do that, huh? All right, so it's uh, 1220. Uh, let's wait until 1224. Gamer, is that you? Because you're, you're saying no way. Oh, another person? <laughs> For your information, I donated our artillery Sidewinder X1 V4 uh, today to a young person who wants to learn 3D printing. Very nice of you. I'm 76 years old, so I have more disposable income than he does, so this uh, live is perfect for me. That's uh, that's fantastic. Larry, that's very kind of you. Good on you, sir. Uh, I donated a printer today as well to a uh, to a friend of mine uh, that wants an advanced machine. I gave him one of these, the um, uh, X plus three by Chitty Tech, and I donate machines all the time. Actually, uh, not, uh, the KE that's back there is gonna be donated to another friend that wants to get into 3D printing. I think that'll be a perfect machine. Reduce uh, time, yeah. Reduce time frame. Larry, we need more people like you. Yes, I, I agree. It's good stuff. Um, all right. You know what? I'll wait another two minutes. How about that? Twelve twenty-two. It's twelve twenty-one right now. We have one minute. Chris M, are you here? I know there's a delay. Sometimes the commercial kicks in. It's like two minutes long. You don't realize that you're not actually live, and there's a delay. So, hi. Yes, that's me. Okay, you do have a similar avatar. Uh, that taco guy. Uh, let me ask you this, sir. That taco guy. Chris. Yeah, it, well, it says guy. Uh, okay, I can see by your email. Taco guy, congratulations. You are the winner of the spool. So here's what you need to do. Listen up. Uh, I would like you to go to 3D Max's website. You can use the link down there or not. 
uh, uh, 3D Max, I think it's IIID Max.com. Head over there and find a PLA Plus that you like that's in stock. Make sure that it's in stock, please, Taco Guy. Uh, when you find one that's in stock, you need to email me at Fedor, which is F E D O R. Okay, it's my first name, F E D O R, at 3dprintsos.com. If you forget that, the email is in the YouTube uh, about section. Fetter at 3dprintsos.com. Okay, so email me your address and your uh, pick of the PLA Plus that you choose. Uh, carbon, PLA Plus Carbon is not available. So just a, a PLA Plus that's in stock. So send me that email, hopefully tonight or early tomorrow morning, and I will forward that over to them along with the previous winners. I think I have three to ship. Uh, so I'll get that over to them and they will ship that out. All right, confirm please in the chat that you got those instructions or pizza. <laughs> now I want tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like tacos. Taco, you there? <laughs> Fednor the Barbarian. Or Fer <laughs> Ferdo the Hobbin. The Hobbit. Wow, that's another shirt. <laughs> Taco, where'd you go? Please confirm. See, there might be a delay. It's worth waiting. As a bonus, I wonder if that taco guy needs a car warranty to go along with that PLA Plus. <laughs> My printer is also 1.216. Well, that's a, a nice plot twist, isn't it, Jerry? <laughs> I, ref I refresh. I think I was behind. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what happens. See, that's why I like to wait, guys. So please be patient. Like I said, next time what happens is uh, YouTube will put a commercial into the live stream. And you don't know that when you come back, you're no longer live. You're actually behind that time frame. So if there's a delay, you don't notice, uh, and it like it keeps going. The delay is more and more uh, on delay, as they say. Ah, oh, that's bad. That was a bad joke. Anyway, uh, that's why I like to wait five minutes. Uh, anyway, now that you're refreshed, please confirm that you know the instructions, and you will get yourself a lovely spool of PLA plus. <laughs> When I pee, it hurts. It's my wife by name. Uh, my wife by name is... Uh, well, I have several. Uh, but... Uh, mine is totally not spyware. <laughs> Love your channel, bro. <coughs> Thank you, sir. I'm glad you enjoy it. Speak for many when I say we come here and watch support and hang out. We recognize you do good for this community. We appreciate you, bro. Thanks for what you do. Hey, I, I appreciate those words. I, you know, I try. I try. Uh, let's check this thing out. Uh, can this pop off now? No, the silk is stuck on there. There we go. There we go. All right, good bottom. So zero, whoops. Sorry, everybody. Zero issues with cooling. That actually looks really good for fast silk. Like I said, silk usually does not like going fast. So like all these kind of like wrinkles that you see, it's because it's silk going fast. It doesn't like to come out of the extruder fast. Whoa, that's actually more detailed than I expected. You can almost see the text there. Great overhang, fantastic overhang there. Like really, really good. Let's check here really good as well so this this printer has no issues with cooling cooling is fantastic uh there's usually an, a big change right here in color and this is not bad especially for silk this is a slicing issue this is they did not set a minimum uh time on the layer which means that it didn't wait a split second for the cooling fan to do its thing as it printed and it just can't cool this filament enough and it just continuously went up so this is a slicing issue. This is not a printer issue. Uh, and you can clearly tell by the rest of this print. Let's see the top here. Yeah, maybe a little bit weak on the uh, infill. Looks like the infill might have been a little bit low or uh, the top sections might have been a little bit low. You can see that there. But let's look at these shapes. 
So the square is pretty square. This could have been a little bit better. So that's kind of a little bit of a bummer, but that's not bad. This is this is not a bad Benchy. Uh, this needs to be reprinted, reprinted in a non silk filament that's for sure and uh, technically i would i would just re-slice one myself at this point you know so carnitas enchiladas for the win uh if you want to just send me an email with an address i can confirm it to me. no no i believe it's you i can see uh your email address your name and i can see that it has taco in it i get it so it's all good uh just send me that email i'll know which email it comes from uh based on the email that you used for gleam so just send me an email, fetter at 3dprintsos.com with your choice of filament and your address, and I'll forward that to, uh, uh, to 3D Max. And if you can do it tonight, like now, uh, then I'll do it tomorrow morning uh, or even tonight, uh, and I'll send it over so that they'll have, all, they'll have that information, okay? Hey, see you, Jerry. Thank you for popping in here, man. I always appreciate you in here. My friend's getting a colonoscopy. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> We've been trying to reach you. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> nice. Bye. Caleb just says bye. See ya, man. Yeah, not bad for silk. Definitely. Yeah, if you guys know about fast printing and silk, it's it's not like that. Better print my Kilex 3 is okay, but I need to go better. Yeah, the, the Kilex 3 is okay. Yeah, it, it's getting there. It's right there at the time where it would be cool to upgrade. 25 bucks, Larry. Larry, I that's that's very kind of you, man. I, I, I really appreciate that. That's that's very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh you can slow down the minimum layer time. Exactly. That's that's all that is. Like I, I've done this myself just not knowing how to slice. Uh you know, maybe they should have done that better, yes, but uh, you know, they want this thing to print as fast as possible, so I see why they tried to do that. But like I said, it's it's not a cooling issue. That's just a slicer issue. Also, if you had instructions for me between when I finished, I missed them. Oh, uh, Taco, let's try this again. Uh, better at 3dprintsos.com is my email. You might have missed them because when you were going in between. So my first name, F-E-D-O-R at 3dprintsos.com, Okay. So email me uh, your choice of PLA Plus from their website. It has to be in stock uh, and your address. Okay, so that's all I need. Just an email with your choice and the uh, and your address, and I will I will shoot that over. Yeah, I I agree with with this. That's that's fantastic. I just ordered one of your mugs. Awesome. I, I'm ho I hope you enjoyed. Uh, one thing that uh, that I really like about these mugs, like honestly is uh that you can microwave these and without them getting brutally hot so you know i had a coffee in here and i microwaved it uh for two minutes uh 30 seconds which makes the coffee almost unbearable to drink but all my other mugs get so hot i could barely hold them this thing for whatever reason uh is really good at that great mug maybe i'll make some more mugs <clears throat> i think i'm going to bed <laughs> Demon, thank you for being here, and thank you for being here yesterday, even though uh, I wasn't very clear about the time. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you. Good night, all. All right, Papa. Thank you for being here, as always. Did I give you your entrance? Papa's here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for being here. All right, everyone. I think we're going to call it here. Um, you know, now that this thing is out of the box... Uh, I can uh, I can do my due, due diligence and uh, you know make sure that I check it out, make sure I print a bunch of things with it, and mo more importantly, like I said, the reason why I wanted to do this one was because now I have a direct comparison with two other machines that I have here in the shop that I just did a video on, shop studio, whatever you want to call it. So uh, that's cool. I think. Uh, I think this thing is more comparable to the Elegoo than the Mingda machine. Um, but I think this has some things over it and some things under it. Uh, but this is an interesting thing. So we'll see on the 20th uh, what this thing actually costs. Because um, I, I, I actually don't know the price. I, I don't know what their, what their exact plan with the launch is and all that. But 
like I said, I would like the time between then and now to be able to print on it and check it out. I do like a bunch of little stuff on it there, here and there, so, whoops, come on up, there we go. Uh, glad I made it here, thank you. No, thank you, appreciate it, appreciate it. Pretty sweet rig, yeah, not bad, right? That's not bad. You know, printers, printers in general are getting harder to compare because one, there's so many and they're good. Like majority of the machines that are coming out now are good. So it, it's, you know, when you see something off, the only thing I can do is just mention it, right? Like mention all the weaknesses because that's how we're going to be measuring these machines. They have so many features. They do so much stuff. Their only like differentiator is their, you know, one little negative nitpick th thing somewhere. So Thank you, Fetter. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. I'll get that email to you in a few. Just browse the selection. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll be here for a minute. And like I said, I might send it tomorrow anyway. So just get that. try to get that to me soon. This was utterly fantastic. Like, by the way, I live only 1.5 mi miles from Elvis's birthplace. Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's cool. You're practically Elvis Jr. at this point. Local legend. Are diamond tips worth the money? Uh, yes and no. If you are going to have a machine for a while, like if you're going to keep one machine for a while, then yeah, you're investing in not needing a nozzle lever. Uh, if you're going to be kind of swapping machines, if you're going to have multiple machines, I don't think so. A hardened steel nozzle will last a very long time. Um, so it's one of those things. If you're just going to stick to one, I, I would say yes. If you're not going to stick to one, no way. Like if you bought one or you're looking at one, but you know that later maybe you're going to get something newer, or like, you know what I mean? Maybe it's like an in-between machine. Nah, I wouldn't do it. But if, if you're going to stick to one and you really love the machine, yes. Thank you for this video. Absolutely. Thank you. Ruby tips. Yeah, same thing. Like, uh, um... I bought a $75, I backed a, a $75, I think it was $75, it was $45? Maybe, I think it was $75. I bought, I backed the uh, Zodiac nozzles back in the day. Um, and I was really skeptical, but I met the guy that made them. Uh, and I, I fully trusted him, and I, I backed them, uh, and I used them. I still use it in both, both my Vorons run them. Uh, I don't think any of the other machines run them anymore. They used to. I took them out. So at the moment, both of my Voron machines run my Zodiac nozzles. I've had them for three years, four years. Same nozzles. Still running them. So, and they're hardened steel nozzles that were meant to compete with the other types of, of nozzles. So they're, they're harder material than the standard hardened steel. That, like the super cheap ones, they're, they're, they're not that. But uh, with that said... If they lasted this long with zero issues, I'm going to assume that a ruby or a diamond is going to be even longer. So you're investing in just never needing a nozzle again. Diamond nozzles will actually burn up, do they? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had one. That, I've never heard of that before, Jack. I don't know about the synthetic ones. Yeah, I, I literally don't know. I just know that there are people that say that they're awesome. And it's one of those things where it's supposed to last forever. It's supposed to be your last nozzle. So if you're looking if you're looking to do that, then yeah, it's probably worth the investment. All right, everybody. On that note, I think we're going to get out of here. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for everyone that, that donated and, and uh, added memberships and became a subscriber and all that fun stuff. I appreciate you. Thank you guys that have bought some merch today. I, I honestly think the merch thing is, is kind of cool. I need, to, I need to do more and more of that because it, it, it's not a profit thing. It's not that. It's right now, if I say, oh, uh, become a Patreon or a YouTube member, yeah, that's obviously fantastic. But at the same time, Patreon gets like 30% of that. Same with YouTube. So yeah, I'm getting the, the support, obviously. It's fantastic. But they are as well. And yeah, when you buy merch, they're going to get majority 90% more than 90% of the money but you get a thing like you get a thing 
you don't get that with Patreon. Yeah, you get member, you know, you get uh, the videos early. You can talk to me. You get Discord, special Discord channels, like things like that. You get like virtual things. But for some reason, maybe I'm just like old school in that in that sense where getting a thing like this seems to be a cooler way, uh, you know, to do it. And like the fact that it still supports me exactly like directly as much as the other ones do, just not monthly. Uh, I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to keep going. So if you guys have ideas for any of that stuff, appreciate that. Um, yeah. I <laughs> love your shirt. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. I hope you guys had a good time. I'll see you all later. Peace.